season long, we have been on a global quest to find the best. And that has led us to this moment. Halo fans all around the world, are you ready to get the most prestigious championship in esports started? Coming to the stage first, looking to fly high and put their final opponent to sleep. Make some noise for Cloud9! Coming up next, the Rookie of the Year. Looking to have an historic season. We got Bound. The man who was always there for his teammates and full of passion. We got Penguin. And looking for his second champion with his championship with his duo Eco. We got Stella. Cloud Nine, the gatekeepers of the grand finals, looking to do it again, back to back to kick off this season. But here in the world championship, can they do it one more time? Make some noise for Cloud Nine. Now, it's time for their opponent. This team right here has been building a foundation brick by brick. Your Orlando champions looking to win another grand finals. It's up to Gaming! <laughs> On the hunt for greatness, Looking for his first world championship, we got Trippity! A man has, who, who has been underrated, but now undeniable. Make some love for one of the greatest faces in Halo, APG! You got your Super Slayer and League MVP. Give it up for Lucid! And the FPS guy looking to earn another world championship, but this time in a title closer to home. Give it up for Formo. And one last time as a whole, make some noise for Optic Gaming. Now our players are on the stage and they got it locked in. Seattle, y'all ready to get this one started? One more time, I know y'all can get louder. Y'all ready to get this grand final started? It's time to send it over to our casters to get this one started. On set and Rob, let's lock it up. Thank you so, so much, Blaze, and the stage is set here in Seattle. All eyes on the prize, we've just seen both Cloud9 and Optic Gaming making their way to that main stage and that Halo World Championship trophy. They couldn't take their eyes off it. They could not. The final two here, and you have to say, these two teams, in terms of overall performances, have looked the best. And it's no surprise that we see them here in our grand finals at the Halo World Championship. We'll start off by talking about our map rotation, though, just so you know how this grand final is going to work at home. We move from best of fives to a best of seven. If Optic Gaming win this first best of seven, they will be your Halo World Champions. However, if Cloud9 win this first best of seven, we go again, and then it's all said and done. That is right. How about the second that Optic gets on the stage, the green ball chance is already underway. You got Hitch with the low tom. The man has got the drum, and the green wall is out here in force. Greenwall is out here in force, without a doubt. And speaking of a force, that is exactly what Optic Gaming have been. Not just this tournament, but starting from the NA Super, they have just ascended to a different level. After that first championship in Orlando, now it just seemed like the trajectory was set for them to become a Halo World Champion. It really did feel that way, and they have looked better and better. And maybe they've never looked better as we take a look here. They are undefeated in 13 straight series. They are undefeated all weekend long, and they have only dropped one single game. One single game, perfect. 
in objective game types as well up to this point. But who else would be there staring across them? It's Cloud9, the guardians of the grand finals. If there's a LAN event happening anywhere in the world and Cloud9 are there, you can guarantee they're going to be in that grand finals. They've got a long road ahead of them, Andy, but if anyone can do it, it's got to be C9. That's right. Let's not forget Seller and Eco. They've been in this place before. They've held that trophy in their hands. They know what it feels like to become a world champion. And you also heard the desk talking about Bound's rookie season. This guy has burst onto the scene, and what a story it would be for him to take a world championship in the end. You'd have to make the argument it could be one of the greatest rookie seasons of all time. Bound's making his debut, by the way, back in Raleigh, the, the kickoff major in Halo Infinite. Hey, we didn't even know what he'd look like right. until that event, and now he's on the main stage in the World Championship final. Absolutely, let's go ahead and take a moment to set the stage. Let's do it indeed. There has been hundreds of days of Halo Infinite competition, and in that time, we have had thousands of teams enter, battle it out with regional champions crowned across the globe. I mean, it's been incredible. We've all watched, whether here from the main stage, or of course, every one of you joining us from home around the world, as three separate teams earned those championships at those majors, but now, after four unforgettable days and a hell of a lot of VR ammo, we find ourselves with just two teams remaining. And I think a lot of players and fans alike, and certainly you and I included, believe this is the most competitive landscape that Halo has ever seen. Not only is it a series of Halo input for the best part of a million dollars as well in the prize pool, it's a chance to be named the best, to join the history books to join that elite group who can call themselves Halo World Champions. And as we look ahead to what we're going to see, it's only right we pay respect to the past before we get this series underway. The impact of the likes of the Ogre Twins, Wobshi, Strongside, Pistola, and so many more make Halo more than just a game for so many of us. And that, with that in our mind, we want to say it's a pleasure, it's a privilege for Bravo and myself to take you through the final chapter of what has been an incredible year of action. It's a Sunday night in Seattle, my friends, and you know what that means. It's grand final time here. It's Optic versus C9. Let's crown a champion. Here we go, baby. Trippy and Stellar on your screen. Both of them fighting here now for a world championship. It's a best of seven, and game number one is underway. It's Catalyst CTF, and both of these teams are undefeated in this game type in this weekend so far. I mean, what a way to set the stage. Both teams have not dropped this map. It's going to give us a really good indication of how the teams are feeling and who's feeling hot as we head into the first map of our grand final. At the moment, it's going to be C9 who have the advantage. Penguin, who has been superb so far in this tournament. This man loves the Halo World Championships. Back in 2016, oh, he had no! the highest KD, but he's gonna have to take a neg one as the overshield gets back whacked by Formal. Wow, he tried to take the fast route in with the grapple. He gets back whacked by Formal with the overshield. That's a huge play early on from Formal and the green wall. Formal well, trying to put pressure on. C9 alert to it though. You can see turtle up in their base at the moment. With a couple of kills going their way and Optic losing two players. It's time for Cloud9 now to try and think about moving forward as Bound picks up another. Optic on the back foot. Still three dead here. Despite that early opening here, Cloud9 will keep the spawns rolling. Still two dead here. Trippy and Lucid fighting against all of Cloud9. Look at this push coming in from C9. No, Trippy versus Eco. Eco uses that grapple to get out. And perfectly as well, because who is there to pull that flag to finish that kill with Penguin? Oh, formal off the respawn. That's a huge kill to stop the flag. If the flag crosses that threshold right there, it almost certainly goes halfway across the map. Bound now going to continue advancing the flag. However, two were dead. He needs to slow down and reset a bit. Bound fully aware of the situation on the map. Two players have fallen. However, a little play like that is going to maybe look to even things up. You've got Bound versus Lucid in the 1v1 battle. There's a spike grenade. Lucid just buying time for his teammates to get in position. Formal accepts the invitation, comes to join him, keeps him alive. Should be able to get his return as well. Flag is also running now all the way across the other side. Overshield popping in a few, but not before Trippy's got the flag, and he's coming home. Got some work to do first, though. You can see Stella overextended, and Stella and Eco get kills inside of the Optic Gaming base. Stella picks up another one as well, so Lucid and Trippy now thinking about combining together to get the kills to put the first flag in. Now they've got to worry about the counter cap and bounce back with a vengeance. He's got the next overshield. That's the second overshield for Cloud9 here. That's great power of management for them so far in this game. Bounce going to get the touch as well. APG in the death screen is 3v3 on the map. Bounce going to try and force this one forward, and it looks like the first strike is going to go to Cloud9. Bounce 
showing that he's not just a slayer, he can move that flag too. And the C9 fans in the room getting loud as well. They want to make it known that it's not just the green wall that has a huge presence here in the crowd. Also, Cloud9 fans getting loud after that first cap there on the first to strike. Oh, no. wow. 1v3, he comes out with one and he does damage onto two other players as well. However, Eco just couldn't locate his BR right for where he needed it to there to clean up some of those kills. Optics stabilize here. They get inside the C9 base. Bounce coming off a respawn alongside Penguin. But APG, he's got that flag on the move. Also, kills coming in here. They just took down Stellar. Now four players up on the map, but they will need to prioritize these spawners who are going to be overextending right towards their base. APG, one of the most experienced players, one of the longest serving Halo players that we have in the Halo Championship Series is going to have to lean on that experience now because as he runs this flag, members around him have fallen. Bounce staying alive as well. APG takes him down. But you can see C9 on that return. APG maybe thinking about doing something sneaky. Penguin's there. Penguin gets the return. APG goes for the repulse and also repulses the flag. So the flag is reset. It's a great return from Cloud9. And that will let their entire team slow things down and breathe for just a moment. They will maintain that one to zero lead. We flip over to the point of view of the regular season MVP. That man's name is Lucid. Dancing around at the moment, but he's going to be Taken to the death screen there after a nice beat down that comes in from Bound to give a couple of numbers here to C9. Trippy, the only player alive here for Optic. And once again, you can see he's got decisions to make. Eco's going for that overshield. And I think he's going to get it as well. C9 actually play the overshield. They do not get the pop, but they do also have that flag moved up the stand. That's great pressure from Trippy in the end. The overshield will be played, but at what cost here? Here comes the flag. Two dead. Penguin needs to slow play this. There's pressure on his flag. Gotta be careful here. Penguin knows that the pressure is coming in, knows that teammates are falling around him. First thought probably here for Penguin, get damage down, stop that counter cap opportunity. That's Formal tries to take advantage of it. Here's Lucid, there's a double for him. Bound now last alive as Optic, but to answer back. Now Eco, your last player alive here, he's gonna be a spawner. Lucid gets the double kill, he gets the return. He also continues the run, doing it all as he's done all season. He's also 12 and five in this game. Lucid has been in World Championship for most of the year. Takes just a moment, a stutter step before securing the first flag for Optic. It's one-to-one. -one. And beautiful response there from Optic Gaming. It looked like Cloud9 was really just holding off that pressure. But in the end, Optic strike, and they tie the game up one-to-one -one here. It's a big part of denying that overshield as well. Optic Gaming tying up the game at one-to-one. -one. The comms are gonna sound crispy. It's time for us to jump into a listening now with Astro Gaming. <laughs> Yeah, we need to live. I'm just going to base. 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 I'm just going to Yep, that one. We got plenty of time. <laughs> oh, that's and skewer. Yeah, I'm not already helping. Oh, I'm not i not Red's looking for him. They're Carl, they're Carl. Just give me two on me, guys. Here we go, Flag. Extra. 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 As we jump out the listening and back into the game, it's Cloud9 who strike next. It's two to one. To the team dressed in blue at the moment, but Formos are going to change that story. He is. He's going to run this Ivy side. He knows he doesn't have the numbers. You can tell he's slowing down the run. He's going to double back to put a little more support before he runs his home. But both flags are pulled here, and both teams will try to run this on Ivy side. APG gets the stop. APG with responsibility on his shoulders now. Has to be worried about his own flag, but also with assisting Formal to deal with these players from Cloud9. It's four. Dead for C9, they will get this return. But as you can see, it looks like C9 managed to get that flag back to base as well. But Formal goes for the repulse on the kill and repulse the flag, and the flag returned during the repulsor there, so he's gonna have to start the run one more time. 
the gaming inside of their base. Flag is moving though here from Formal. Couple of kills being picked up. He turns back, but he doesn't need to help APG as he picks up the double. But there is Bound being such a nuisance, but a trip ski for APG. That experience on display once again. A killing spree as well as he brings his flag home. You thought Bound might have to stop. APG has something to say about that. They're looking to secure the game tying flag. He's got the assistance to run this one in SQL and with four minutes left on the game clock. Optic Gaming tie this one up at two to two. There's life in the green wall here in game number one. Look at APG's numbers. He's 18, 14, and 12. Those are world championship numbers. The man is looking to strike. Overshield still down bottom middle. Full commitment there from Trippy to make sure that C9 did not get that overshield. Gave his life up for it. Made sure that it was even shields across the board. Trades just back and forth on mid-map at the moment. You can see that the intensity, yeah. the speed at which both of these teams are playing it, and that's something we spoke to Eco about before this tournament kicked off. How do they match the pace of Optic? If they have to slow it down, they have to recognize it as quickly as possible, but they love to push the pace. He said himself, well, we can play fast, we're gonna play fast. Yeah, so far they're doing it. You might have seen Optic's run in Orlando, you might have seen it here, and also C9 dropping down early. You might have thought maybe they're not up to the task. They are pushing Optic Gaming to their limit here. Tied up two to two with three minutes left. One of the reasons for that is bound 21 kills, leading the lobby at the moment for Cloud9. Trippy doing some work inside of his base, now turning his attention for a nice little double kill. Bound, that player I was talking about, is last alive, and he's having to wrap back here to stop that flag moving. Bound, ooh, great man. Ooh. Trippy is locking down his lobby. He knew the pressure was coming, somehow stays alive as well. Penguin flies out to clean him up though, Lucid now. Thinking about rotating back and making sure his base is secure. Knows that APG is under pressure. And that's probably going to give the indication that's where the push is going to come in from Cloud9. Penguin and Stella trying to apply said pressure. However, it's been held off well by Optic Gaming here. A little bit of a reset across the map. Penguin though, being so, so sneaky. Good chance this overshield decides this next flag. Gonna be popping up in 21 seconds here. You can tell both teams just really showing each other respect in these moments as we wait 15 seconds till the next overshield. Both know the difference between the two teams is so slender, it can be one death. It gives away an overshield. From that, you have that butterfly effect where the flag gets moving. And all of a sudden, you find yourself coming off of respawn desperately, trying to stop that flag. Stella's gonna get the next overshield here for Cloud9. Not only that, he's got the skewer and Optic have two players in the respawn Wow, screen. they're spawning in the back of the base here. This is the opportunity for Cloud9 to strike. 150 on the clock, they've got all the goodies to play with. Stella, vital to the success of this push. Still has a lot of overshield to play with as well. A couple of trades going in the favor of Optic though. You can see that Stella's had to turn his attention from the flag to making sure the numbers are equal. There's one, but there's the wow. pressure from Trippy. They neutralize the overshield. No impact here for Cloud9. What a counter from Optic Gaming. Not only do they isolate themselves away from the overshield, but they pick up kills on other players there. They get two dead. That left Stellar to try to clean up the scraps. He couldn't do it. That's a great counter from Optic Gaming. We will stay tied at 2-2 two two with 1.15 left on the clock. You see the Trippy knew there was someone near him. He just couldn't find where he was. Eco trying to nade him out at the moment. Lucid is there to help him out. But finally, it looks like Eco will be taken down by APG. But again, the last time we saw a flagpole feels like a lifetime ago now. Both teams just cannot get inside the base. Absolutely, you risk a lot if you go for a flagpole at the wrong time. That's a very good chance of a counter cap. But as we say that, two dead for C9 and Former will start the next run. Yeah, uses that grapple to just oh. almost force it down that high hole. Two dead here for Optic, make it three dead. Trippy last alive, the return will come in. What does Trippy do here? 30 seconds left on the clock, that run will not go. He needs to make sure they play defense here and look for a little bit of damage and control off the respawn. 30 seconds on the clock. Double push on the skewer side of the map here. Former will pick up that kill onto Eco, who was the player who fell just below him. Trippy though, you can see, just sent something there. Whether it was communication coming in from Optic, someone saw Stella. Trying to sneak down and oh. bound. He's going to keep him alive for now. The skewer could be a game changer here for C9. Trade's going down here. Keep in mind, at 2-2, this overshield is going to be a big factor because we will see overtime likely here. Or on round one tie. 10 seconds left here. If we don't see a pull, we will go into an overtime. Round just about manages to sneak out with his life. Wasn't able to connect on that player in the back flag. We're into overtime. 2-2, two to two, the game ends. We said neither team have lost this game type. You can see exactly why. Wow, I mean, we talk about a great game one here in the Grand Finals at the Halo World Championship. These teams so evenly matched here. Stride for stride, they will each put two flags on the board, and now we are into a five-minute overtime. First kill will go to Lucid. The restart of these overtimes 
It's usually where we see the games decided. You have the power-ups on the map. You have the overshield. You have the skewer. Bound get a little bit reckless here, going for an optic and just waiting. They're setting the trap, and it looks like Cloud9 are taking the bait. It's going to be trippy. Who gets that OS? Perfect timing there from Optic Gaming. Two dead for Cloud9, and it's very different from our first game. You see a lot of power up control coming in from Cloud9, but now Optic Gaming, they saw what they did off the opening. They counter that, and now Trippy might not know there's another player on the back flag. Oh, he does a bounce slide down, though. Bound makes his presence known, and Trippy takes advantage of that two dead hit for C9. Trippy's running this. Trippy with that kill has got that flag going. Yeah, he's running this right at the C9 spawners. They don't care. They're taking it straight in their face. Keep in mind, this would be the game winning cap. And why doesn't he care? Because he's got Formal alongside him. Formal picked up two kills, and Trippy, it's a clear run home. Time. Talk about the perfect timing push. Complete power of dominance from Cloud9 all game in that first 12 minutes of regulation. However, Optic Gaming, they learn from that regulation period. They come into overtime, they win the opening battle and the overshield, and they essentially win the game off the back of those opening kills. Yeah, and it's just those little moments we always talk about. Overshield, that first pickup, it was almost as if Optic had remembered the opening strategy from Cloud9. They readjusted and they baited that Overshield. Maybe C9 looking at it thinking, Optic, I'm going for this. We might be able to steal in, but as soon as that thought comes into your head, that's where you play into the hands of Optic. All smiles for Lucid here, understandably so. Yeah, you bet. Right now you see the Optic fans, of course, the green wall. That's hey, number one. Strong number one. Exactly. Yeah. Seattle's number one Optic fan. Great to have you with us here. Brick by brick goes the green wall. The first brick is laid in the game types there. It's a best of seven, and they now have one game secured under their belt, needing three more to close this out. As a reminder, Cloud9 needs to win not just this best of seven, but another best of seven to call themselves world champions. That's one game for Optic. Next, we set our sights on Slayer Streets. Yes, we do indeed. Both these teams have so much history on this map, and Slayers have been so strong for Optic. However, of the game types, they've lost this event, which there is one. It was, of course, that Slayer game type. So C9 have to keep that in mind and think about answering back in this series. But that is the first step, like you say, on the ladder, completed for Optic Gaming. Game number two is in front of us now. First to 50 kills here on the streets. If it's Optic, they'll be up by two. Will C9 be able to answer back and equalize a one to one? That's the question. How do they bounce back? It was such a great performance. Keep in mind, Cloud9 with the lead there for most of regulation. They get upset there. We are now into game number two here. Slayer on street. Top of the gaming leads one to zero. All eyes on bound as well. This man is going to go forward and he's going to be running at you. And we're already the speed of which he's in the face of Trippy means that Trippy doesn't even know he's behind him. With the kills being traded out, C9 actually find themselves on the back foot. The Penguin now has to turn his attentions to not only staying alive, but maybe using that Stalker to lock down Rockets. But with that nade and the shield being taken down, that just allows Formal to move in and say, you know what, I'll take these in my hands. Trippy and APG also pick up kills as well. Three dead now for Cloud9. What a start for Optic Gaming off of once again. A double kill on the Neons paves the way for a free Rocket grab, and they capitalize on the damage and the man advantage. They now lead by two. C9 needs to not panic here, though. Even though Optic have the weapons, they have map control. There are going to be moments on Street Slayer where you are going to be under the pump because you don't have control of said weapons. If you can keep that damage minimal, like C9 have managed to do, yeah. it's a great sign for you as a team. It's great game management, like you say, from C9. They had two players dead, you had Formal with the Rockets. On paper, that should be a huge Optic Gaming lead. Instead, Cloud9 has kept this close despite not having power weapon control. Two kill lead now for Optic Gaming. You can see already the game has slowed down almost to a complete standstill between the two teams. Here's a flank coming in from Stella though, but there's a big... Oh, APG! Turns and burns Stella. You cannot lose that one if you're Stella. Very nice there with a the thrust from APG. He's gonna take down that battle. Rockets coming up in 26 seconds. Gotta talk about a player like APG just dominating all weekend long, and of course, Formal as well, anchoring this team. A huge part of that Orlando win, and now setting their sights on a world championship. Formal of the opening is two and one. Something to highlight here about APG as well. We've just seen him win that huge BR battle. This man's ability to switch his play style, depending upon if it's an objective game type or if they're moving into a Slayer, actually means that he has the highest KD 
for Optic Gaming in the Slayer game type. So what is normally the support player who doesn't mind doing the dirty work, he'll keep those deaths down and he'll keep those kills up when it comes to Slayer. That's right, with the Rockets up and Cloud9 able to bring this game back within one. Let's get ready for an Astro listening here on the side of Cloud9. Yeah. Is that in one? MPD1, MPD1, MPD1. Watch out, watch out, Two there, two there. Live a game, live a game. Nice. I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking at Petri, I'm looking at Petri. Look at Arvia, look at Arvia. Can only be one there. One shot, one is on shot. Bench is one shot, APG. Where's the rock? Bench is one shot, I got C stairs. Okay, we're looking at it. Bench is dead. Watch out, trash, 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 B rail, B rail still. Keep playing together. Play tight. Yeah. I'm looking drive one. They're running away. They ran away. Oh, yeah. Yo, I've stuck. I've no, stuck. in tires, Kevin. Yeah, I know. Arcade and tires on me. Arcade, arcade, get ahead. Tires still. Arcade weak, arcade weak, arcade weak. I'm pushing arcade up. Okay, watch out, watch out, arcade. Absolutely. I'm one, I'm one right now to live. Duck arcade, so one shot. One shot. I don't have Nice job, nice job. Two tires, two tires, two tires. I saw this one. Dead one shot, one shot, one shot. Dead 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 one shot, one they're pushing yeah, B, they're trying to push in the B. We can be, we can be, we can be. We can be, we can be. I'm going behind you, I'm going behind you, Scott. There's a guy in seat there, seat there, Scott. Nade, 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 nade. Watch out, Francine, watch out, Francine. I think they're both on their own. I'm coming down, I'm coming down, I'm coming down. Watch out, Red Room with Rust. He didn't die, bro. Come back into the game out of that listening. It's Cloud9 who have taken the control. And as you can hear, it is Eco, the leader. The IGL here for Cloud9, who is just calling the shots and everyone responded. Yeah, Seller stepping on here. He doesn't know that someone's in arcade as well. Somehow he scampers away. No, he doesn't. Lucid with the commando angle. Leave it to Lucid. Kills will be traded out, though, in the end. And lots of pressure from Neon, Seer, and Tires. Four kill lead still for Cloud9. One well, thing that Cloud9 have done extremely well is make sure when they get numbers, they're taking advantage of it. But here's Trippy looking to turn something back into the favor of Optic Gaming. With that kill coming in from APG, it's four in the death screen for Cloud9, and now you're seeing just a two-kill difference between the two teams. I got just an absolute tug-of-war back and forth here. What was just about a six-kill Cloud9 lead after the deficit is now just a two-kill game. Optic Gaming has brought this back once again. This is how tightly these teams are matched, not wanting to give one another an inch. And the way back into the game for Optic Gaming was that second set of Rockets as well. You saw them in the hands of Formal, picked up two kills, and that's now two out of two power weapon pickups on the side of the green wall. C9 are gonna have to look to improve that if they wanna make sure this is a comfortable win as they can find. Look at this joust, just both teams just playing this slow. They do not wanna give up any free kills. Not letting any advantage go to the other way. This is one of the slower street slayers we've seen all season. Oh, yeah. And for very good reason, $180,000 on the line in this series alone. That's the difference in prize pool between one and two, and it's a perfect time to get ready for an Optic Gaming listen-in as they trail by two. Make sure we're checking corners. We were not watching purple. I don't think they did. I think they're all in dude. That ass. Watch out, watch out. Watch out, watch out. Watch out, watch out. Watch out, watch out. Okay, listen, listen, guys. I can use stickies for these rockets. Okay, okay. I'm absolutely guys. I'm absolutely guys. Push, push, push. We need to back off. Brad, we need to back off this. Keep your shields, guys. Keep your shields. Don't leave. Joey's trapped right now, though. Yeah, Joey's trapped a little bit. Red, 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 I got melted from Pop-Elk. He's one shot down. Yeah, I spawned here, I spawned here. We're all here, they could be purple. Yeah, they're behind us. Go, I'm actually still alive. I'm actually still alive. Help Joey, help Joey. No, he has one. Watch Listen, they're still in sub, guys. They're still in sub. Fine, fine, fine. We'll talk in the thing back, so I'm gonna push out sub. I'm gonna push out sub. Yeah, we should push sub. I'm gonna help Tommy. I'm gonna help Tommy. That's fine, too. Wait, we need to push sub with Rockets right now. One's Ivy, one's Ivy. Hold their exit, Joey. Watch, it could be in the corner. Hold their exit, Joey. Hold their exit, Joey. Watch out. Nice one, Dad. Another one's here somewhere. He's back sub, back sub. He's back sub. He's back sub. He's back sub. Yo, Joey, you're completely alone right now. Make soccer, make soccer. No, he's watching purple stairs. Play purple, play purple, play purple Joey, play purple Joey. No, he's pushed up on purple. I'm on sleep, I'm on sleep. Okay, we got it. Shotty close, shotty close, shotty close. I got two stairs, shotty close. Watch out, 
He's one shot front sub, one shot front sub. Three guys on top of me. One shot front sub, one shot front sub. They're all sub, front sub. Good trash, trash and Ivy, trash and Ivy. Trash and Ivy. That's all sub. Chill, 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 chill. Slow down. Are you pushing me? 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 Are you He's one bullet. Yo, green jet, green jet with a stalker. Rockets at 20. Yeah, yeah. Green jet with a stalker. Look at purple, look at purple. 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 Well, as we jump back into the game, we were listening to Optic, but it's all been Cloud9 since that listening. And it all stemmed from how Optic were almost baited into using both those rockets and getting nothing for it. Absolutely. Here, look at Penguin just holding down the tires with the Bulldog and just doing all sorts of damage, shield in hand as well, and just keeps pumping and dumping. Picks up one. Eventually, he'll be taken down, but still, a C9-5 kill lead. 37-32, Stella with rockets. Oh, the ball was there to meet him. Where did those rockets go? Four more. He's got the Bulldog, but there's a train coming in now and just on that window shelf like a hot pie from a cartoon. Oh, the Rockets and Penguin finds them. Look at that. Rockets down by the middle. Two dead for both sides here. It's still just a four-kill game as we get ready for the home stretch. Five kills between the two teams. Stella pressurizing two players from Optic Gaming. How's managed to pick up that next Rocket, though? He's the man to watch with how grouped up Optic are here. It might not just be one kill, it could be two if he can find these targets. Lucid changes to the battle right from Smartly to make sure that rocket is still in his hands. Oh this one will connect. Oh. It's bound time! Look at this, he's shooting some bodies as well. This is a rookie on a mission here. He leads this team in KD in this tournament. It's been an unbelievable performance. A triple kill late game with incredible rocket discipline as well. They now lead 44 to 37. Found is applying so much pressure into Optic, but maybe that was a little bit too much in that situation. 16 and 10 in this game, number two is bound, but that death has opened the door now for Optic. It's a five kill game. And keep in mind with what we've seen this series and especially this game, this game has been back and forth. We have seen several lead changes. Penguin somehow stays alive and even might even get away with a kill here. He's surrounded by players on Optic. I'm pretty sure that all of Optic are one shot here. Penguin's got a challenge, but there's multiple players inside a tram weak. Cloud9 have the chance to push. They're gonna take that opportunity. Stella cleans up one. Formal trying to scarper away, but can C9 hunt him down. Look at this. Formal just gets around the corner. Three kills to go here for Cloud9. It's a seven kill lead. As things will slow down for just a second, but C9 might apply the pressure yet again. Bound has 18 kills in a game number two in a world championship final. But Optic, we've seen them already pull off an incredible Slayer comeback. They have the rockets to play with as well. Good information gathered here by Trippy. He finds one. This game's getting close on there. Bound again. Trippy. There's a trade from Bound. It's one to go here for C9. And Penguin will tie things up. What a response from Cloud9. In the end, clutching up after back to back to back lead changes in a wild street slayer. Bound goes 20 and 12 <laughs> in a grand finals game two. This man loves the main stage. He's looking at home up there at the moment and C9, like we mentioned, they're in the grand finals for a reason. Optic had to work hard to stay in that game. That moment though, you can target it when you've got two such talented teams on your main stage where the game swung. Optic had the play, had the play, they had the tools. Cloud9, the way they baited out both of those rockets, made the power weapon irrelevant, and then were able to collapse was quite simply brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. An amazing response from the side of C9 to tie the series one to one. And in the end, we'll take a look at some replays from that game, because my God, was it ever a fantastic game number two Slayer. Here's the last minute of play. Don't to worry just for a moment here. You can see the bound point. He had enough damage to maybe just pick up another kill. But all of Optic being trapped inside a tram here towards the end, it was this damage that actually came in from Penguin as well. You see, he jumps up, 
He knows he's got a thrust to play with as yep. well. I think this is the only reason he makes this play. Look how he's going to do damage, but he can get out of there as well. And then this, he gets loose. It's so weak. He's buying so much time. He's even shooting trip. He shot all four players on Optic at this point. He gets all the damage they need. All the damage they need. The good thing here for C9 is they managed to collapse on that damage as well. That's the difference, right? We talk about damage, which is vital. If none of that gets cleaned up, it's just a minus one for Penguin. Right. And Optic have an opportunity to push numbers elsewhere on the map. In the end, great control from Cloud9. And we got to say, as we have a second here, to talk about what just transpired in that match. During the Optic Gaming listening, how many times did you see Cloud9 players get away without trading? There were at least five or six examples on screen. And you and I looked at each other. We said, my god, the team weren't here. It was almost perfect late game composure. But look at this Bound trade. Once again, Bound will trade here in the back of A. That's huge that, to bring them to 49. Yeah, that double kill for Bound. I mean, every single time we seem to see Bound in the kill feed, it's a double kill. A lot of the time, he's so quick at cleaning up one and then immediately turning his attention somewhere else on the map to put influential damage down to help out Cloud9 in those numbers situations. Speaking of numbers, it's one to one now in our grand finals. And we head over to Live Fire for a little bit of King of the Hill. And let's not forget that loss there for Optic Gaming is they're only their second. Cloud9 have only issued Optic's second loss. It will be in Street Slayer. Optic was undefeated, of course, in that game type. Cloud9 had been one and one. So to bounce back in that game type with great late game composure, pretty huge as we set our sights on King of the Hill on Live Fire. We do, indeed. This is an interesting one. King of the Hill as a game type, I feel like is we've seen Cloud9 beat. Optic in that final in Orlando, right? Yes, it was recharged, but it was the way they won it as well. It was such a devastating win. It was four to zero, and it looked like Optic were just completely played off the park. However, we have also seen C9 bleed a little bit. We take ourselves back to the game against Native Red, where it went down to that last overtime hill. Some crazy stuff is still to come, not just in this series, but maybe in this next game as we take a look at two key players on either side. Key players, absolutely. Formal and Penguin on your screen. This is their King of the Hill specific Halo World Championship stats this week at Formal at a huge 1.30 kills per death. And also, big, big damage here coming out of both players here, both in the 6,000 club. If there's one player you probably want in a control-based game type, when you're holding down angles, you're setting things up. I mean, this guy's been doing it for 10 plus years on different titles, right? Whether it's on a head glitch, whether it's on top of the pit, it doesn't matter. Wherever it is, this man knows how to hold down those angles. But the same can be said about Penguin as well. The damage output from this man cannot be matched by many. I mean, especially we talked about it earlier on the desk, but his stats in Orlando were absolutely nuts. Even in a grand final that they lost, he had the highest assists in the entire tournament, and he was dealing so much damage. It's a very different story, though, here in Seattle. Let's not forget, Penguin was actually the kill leader coming into the day before Bound took that lead. So Penguin and Bound both dealing absolute damage, but the man on the closest part of your screen here bound 20 and 12 in a game that they win by five. That's a big momentum boost. It certainly is, and I think the point that you raised there is really vital to kind of elaborate on as well. The fact that responsibility of both kills, deaths, assists, objective is being shared now by all of Cloud9. It matches what Optic do so well, right. right? Whenever we look at damage stats, whenever we look at KDs, assists, whatever it is, there's always like a little bit of, you know, at least it's usually got a few more kills, let's be real, but it's usually pretty even yeah. across the board for Optic. Everyone is comfortable doing every single role. And at this level, in a World Championship final, you need to be comfortable doing whatever it takes to win. Absolutely. And you, you heard him say it in Orlando, and you might have caught it in the process as well. The Optic documentary series, there's one more job to do, and it has already proved to be a difficult one. These two teams tied one to one as we head into game number three. It's going to be King of the Hill on Live Fire. A chance, maybe, for Optic Gaming to go into the lead off of C9 to start casting some doubt towards the green wall. King of the Hill, first to capture four hills or before that time expires. It's where we're gonna find ourselves. Now, live fire at the start of this game was an optic haven. It was their home ground. You kind of almost had the posters of optic gaming up on the wall the way they played this. They never lost this map. That has changed slightly. Can Cloud9 change that narrative once more? That is the question. Both of these teams also undefeated in this game type series. It's all tied up. Everything to play for here in the Grand Finals at the Halo World Championship, starting things off with Bound. Interesting to see what the opening strategy is here for Cloud9 as well. Oh! I mean, there's opening strategy and there's just insane individual skill, and you've just seen kind of both. Absolutely here. That was three dead for Optic Gaming. Now Trippy is going to be the last player alive with the heat wave though on the key door and already starts to deal the damage. Aura Shield still available. And great pressure, great positioning here from Trippy in the cuts. Trippy's just weaving through the map at the moment. He's gonna come in behind bound and find one. The kill was cleaned up from Lucid as well. That should be an overshield. 
going into the hands of Optic Gaming. So Cloud9, they fought for it, they scraped for it, but early time was also picked up by C9. So this is a chance for Optic to break and put a hold together of their own. They're able to get early time, but in the end, you have to think, Trippy was last player alive down bottom mid key door, and somehow off of the respawns, he helps his team lock down that entire part of the map. He gets a kill on scoreboard, he goes, cuts, shuts down dummies, and Optic came to get the overshot on the back of that heroic individual effort from Trippy. And that's why we always talk about how important it is to make sure that last player alive dies as quickly as possible because he can come back and do so much damage to so many as c9 found out at the moment though formal is just locking things down c9 they might just be about to lose his first point optic up by one wasting no time optic gaming even though down to an early deficit like we said they take the advantage from the overshield and they will get the first point on the board. However, off of the back of that, C9 looks to counter. They had three dead for Optic. They had three dead, and they managed to clean the last player out of tower, but Lucid spawned just momentarily before Trippy was taken down. I'm not sure if they know they're here. They certainly do now. As Formal picks up one, Lucid is causing problems back at the tower. It's a heads-up play from C9. You can tell by the way the Bound checked that corner that the comms were coming in, that there's still someone here around tower. Bound and the team prioritize it. Overshield is up here. Overshield is up. That commando is not moving. <laughs> from that overshield spawn. Stella trying to put pressure on Drostic as well. This is a great play coming in from one of the smartest players in the game as well to apply pressure from that key door. Use that heat wave for Trippy there to meet him and Trippy will take him down. Well, what a play from Trippy there. Penguin unable to help because his shields were recharging. Overshield's still up. Here goes APG, can't get it. That's a double kill for Bound. Trippy's still alive though. Still putting pressure on Bound. is down to zero shields. He's barely got any help, but now he has. He comes out. Dressed in yellow, the Overshield goes to C9. Overshield goes to C9, but it's melted right away. It was a Bound versus Trippy, 1v1. Bound wins that off of positioning here. A lot of points on the board here on the second hill for C9. They still control tower. And Bound still with the heat wave. Trippy goes into distraction though. Bound turns his attention away. Loose it with the repulsor. Wow. Make Bound look a little bit uh, awkward in the way that he gets that kill, but it's enough to get the job done. Now Bound is on the flank, and now he's got the heat wave. He finds one APG. Oh I'm sorry, you got out too. It's five in a row for Bound. He's on a killing spree. Oh my god, a killing spree from Bound. Three dead for Optic Gaming. You have to talk about Bound hitting the repulsor jump at that timing. Actually got oh. him out of the sight line of Trippy checking key door there on dummy door, and then he flies back and gets the double kill. It's just brilliant movement, brilliant timing from Bound. The man is a movement magician, and with that play, and with C9, picking up the kills they required, it's one to one now, but Optic have rotated to this next hill, the garage. Oh, yeah. oh. But there's an opening pierced by a sniper rifle bullet. And you were wondering maybe if this is a different C9 than Orlando. I think C9 has already told us that they're a very different team here. All four dead for Optic Gaming. What a break that is from one bullet, a golden bullet. Fired by Stella to get that headshot. Now attention not only turns to the hill and the break for Optic, they've got to think about that overshield as well. First kill does go to Optic. They do have the damage in the break, but we'll see if they can convert here to even more points on the board. Uh oh. Sniper rifle BR, it doesn't matter. Stella just looks absolutely locked into this series. Formal's going to be challenging. Formal can't get the stick. Stella will take him down. It should be an OS now going once again to Cloud9. Lucid picks up one, but it's not enough pressure to keep Stella off the OS. What an absolute flood there from Cloud9 working together. They lose two players. Oh, oh. They lose two players, but Stella just walks in. Body's trippy as well. We'll see if he can finish. Look at the pressure coming in from Optic, though. It's a boxing match. The knockout blow is finally landed by Optic. But Stella went down swinging. Two players dead here, Repulsor in the hands of Trippy. In the hill, he's gonna get a little bit of re-control here. Two players dead for both sides, and out of that scrap, it will finally be Optic Gaming scoring it again. They trail just by a bit here on hill number three. Penguin flies in. The rest of the cavalry from Cloud9 about to arrive top middle as well, but Trippy's ready for it. Eco picks on one, Bound last alive though. The push coming in is unsuccessful, and now we are seeing a tied time on this third hill. Brilliance from Optic on the homes. Look at Bound, stays alive for the scoreboard health. They get one, they do not get two, though. Bound, by the way, 11 and 5 in this game. He is picking up where he left off. Flank now coming in from Eco as well. APG, he's close, and now you're seeing the break again. A clean break from Cloud9, and it was just in time as well. Look how close Optic were to converting this next point. And guess what? Once again, it's Bound. He stays alive. Last player alive on the scoreboard. He gets damage on scoreboard and damage on window, and they convert yet again. Optic is not being as efficient in the four dead category as we have seen them in the past. And Eco now looking to take Lucid down. My word, that thing melts. 
It's two to one now to Cloud9. They roar back in the game, and Optic have to watch him rotate to the next hill from the death screen. Two dead here still off the break there. And Cloud9 is looking like they are starting to gain steam. Overshield popping in eight seconds as well. Scary thing here for Optic as well is the bound is making a brilliant decision here. Pressurizing these players at the back of green, create space for Eco to pick up this overshield. If you get the overshield now, inside of that hill, there's a huge opportunity to make this three to one. It's a desperate play coming in from Optic, but it is C9 who do get that next OS. Look at this here, and there's a heroic effort from APG, but still, as you say, still too dead for the side of Optic. Let's get into an Astro listening with Cloud9. Okay. Watch our screen. Going for it. He's on the vent, he's on the vent. Do that, do that. Keep living. I can help tower, I can help tower. Watching brother. Wait on me, wait on me. Okay, okay, I'm looking over, I'm looking over. I'm gonna look at the jump. Yo, nest. Nest bridge, one shot, C box. One shot, C box, APG. And I got nest, and nest, and nest. APG's like pillars or something. Yo, tell me door now. I'll close on you, close on you. I can help you. Nate, you make up. 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 APG. Right. Make a play together here. Make a play together here. Okay, kills weak, kills weak, kills weak. Watch out, watch out. Keep looking, keep looking. Yep. Getting in the They're gonna be tower. I'm gonna go green one. I've gone behind you, man. Uh, actually, I'm gonna go to Brain. Look at me, look at me. He's close. Two top door, two top door. Need to go rebrain. Uh, uh, no more damage, no more damage. APG, APG. Watch out, 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 we're back in the game then, and Penguin is the POV we're going to be watching because he's found Trippy without any shields whatsoever. C9 up 3-1 yeah. to one during that time, and they're inside of that next hill as well, and looking so Oh boy, a little ring around the rosy for Penguin. He picks up a nice kill, and the C9 fans in the building, they love to see it. By the way, Cloud9 is outslaying 56-43 to 43 at this stage in the game. Repulsor inside of the hill as well means that he can wait for these grenades to come in, or maybe he can take to the heavens. Trippy comes in for the break zone. One dead per side. Bound trying to keep pressure on that hill. And while this is happening, the distraction on the hill from Bound means that Penguin can pick up yet another overshield here for Cloud9. He puts Trippy in the dirt. He's looking for more. Nice job there. APG makes sure to prioritize that overshield player. I think Bound will clean it up. He does another double kill, and it's three dead yet again for Optic Gaming. How, how does he do it? It's just double kill, double kill, double kill from Bound. His ability to move from step one to step two means that step complete here for cloud nine they're up two to one in the series and that was a scary looking performance scary indeed and maybe the scariest thing is bound went 21 and 10 wow in that game against optic gaming absolutely unbelievable that puts him at positive 19 across the last two games alone this man wants a world championship i'm sure that stellar and eco of Mentioned him before, it feels pretty good yeah. to lift one of those up, and I'm sure he's desperate to do it himself. The man who was questioned yes. as the replacement for Renegade. After a couple of games here, maybe he is not the, the question, maybe he's the answer. Absolutely could be, and right now he looks to be in World Championship form after that game that we just saw. Here's a look at some of the highlights there. Optic Gaming off to an early lead, but that story changed very quick. Brilliant movement again from Bounds. You're just gonna see double kill, double kill, double kill every time that you're on his POV. But also we should talk about that one sniper bullet, that one shot from Stella that turned this hill into a C9 point. The ability to break is so difficult against a team who set up so well like Optic. One shot with a sniper rifle, sometimes it's all you have to create that opening. And even off the back, look at that. They scored the second hill and still off. Cloud9 gets four dead on Optic. Off the back of that really, really great timing. The entire game from Cloud9, and we can't say enough good things about Bound. It feels like every time we see him, he's got a heat wave on the dummy door, and he does it again. He goes 21 and 10 with 10 assists to boot. He's also tied for most assists on the team. That is leading in every single category in the game. Absolutely unbelievable from him. Now we move forward, two to one in the favor of Cloud9. Recharge will be the next battleground for both of these teams, and it's time for a little bit of Strongholds action now. This is a fascinating game to have up next. With the pace that C9 have been playing, if Optic cannot win the opening battle, find themselves down numbers. C9 seem to be clicking, 
As Stella said in the listening that we had back from Orlando, it almost seems to be like it's one mind at the moment. It's true, and it feels like C9 wants to play the game faster and faster and faster. And as we talked about earlier, Bound has found that great balance between continuous chaotic aggression and still doing damage that counts the most across the map. We're starting things off with Bound. He's positive 19 across the last two games. Big moment for both teams. In this series, if C9 managed to steal away this game, it will be one more game until we reset that bracket for them. Opti, it's the last thing on their minds right now. They do not want to go through that. Penguin picks up another kill on Trippy. That was a momentary three dead for Optic Gaming. Gonna be an AC hold early on for Optic though. Bound's got away with the camouflage though. You can see that there was a flood towards top A from Optic just to get early scoring in their hands. A bit of pressure's gonna come in here for Maul. Has got the shot right, Maul. Bound is gonna challenge. He doesn't care, but Formal matches the challenge. He accepts it and comes out on top. Let's be honest here, Cloud9 has so far silenced Formal largely during this series. Oh, we normally see him pop it off and maybe that's exactly oh. what he's starting to do. <laughs> Make it a double for Formal. Sometimes you need someone to step up and Formal said, I ain't here to lose this series. I want to gain a world championship, but now he is taking Cloud9 apart. Three dead still for Cloud9 here. It's a trip cap and left the points tick, tick, tick for the side of the green wall. They will continue scoring, and it's 51-0. to zero. Full set up here as well. Bound's gonna challenge once more, and he has to. He has to try and pressurize his shot rifle player. One shot missed. Means that Cloud9 have an opening now. Lucy trying to challenge. Stella picks up two. That's three dead momentarily for Optic, and that is a chance now for C9 to get some control back. And look at the opening here. It's 80 to zero in favor of Optic Gaming, and Bound is 0 4. They've shut him down this game so far. Yeah, and Stella just shooting the floor there to try and influence the spawn, block that pipe spawn, get everyone trapped over at C. But Optic already on the map. Optic already putting two players from Cloud9 in the death screen, and they're already turning P back over. Yeah, it looks like Optic is ready to play just as fast as C9 here. They will fall to dead though. Maybe an opportunity for C9 to bounce back. Make that three dead. It's going to be three dead. They're going to play for B and C here. This is what Cloud9 do. All focus has to be split now from Optic. The communication has to be perfect. They're thinking, do we try and stop B? Do we try and stop C? What's the play call? The question is, they can't do either. It's a trip cap now for Cloud9. Cloud9 responding in a big way. They're trying to bring this game back, and they have camo as well. It's Optic leading 87 to 26. Let's get into an Astro listening with Optic Gaming. Thanks for giving Yo, already back here. Very weak bottom elevator. Back elevator, two of them. One camo there, bottom elevator, camo. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're still in the lead. We're still in the lead. They have camo there. So, over that. You should be out here yeah, like six seconds. They're going to push cold door, Joy. Yeah, she's going back side. I'm trying to watch Joy. Somebody play bottom? Yeah, yeah. Nice. Hit mid, hit mid, hit mid. Got a sniper. He's in gold, he's in gold. Glass and commando, glass and commando, commando weak. Nice shot. Take your time, take your time. Take your time. Take your shot. As we jump back into the game, Optic turnover A, but not before C9 turn over the scoreline. It's Cloud9 in a slender lead at this point. And I have to say, Optic's sounding a little bit flustered at times there. Yeah, definitely. You even heard it earlier in the series as well. You heard it during that live fire game. Slow things down, slow this down. We are still in control, and C9 is certainly applying the pressure. But only an eight point game. Optic will resume scoring now, just down by five points. APG trying to be sneaky here. He knows the bound is going to try. Uh, excuse me, Penguin. He's going to make the play to try and convert. He's going to get the beat down. Penguin's there, but can't get damage. He is bound. APG sneaky. Managing to stay alive and hold off the push.
push from Cloud9 almost on his own there, yeah. Elaine. Also, look at the technical work there from APG. He so well times that play, gets one shot, doesn't take any damage there. It will be a lead change yet again. Up to gaming, takes a lead 125 to 110. Back and forth here in game number four. Now the kills are starting to fall in the favor of Optic. They fought and they battled back into this game. Trippy with a little bit of damage onto those players over the, the C. Is that Cloud9 have to readjust the game plan? AC the hold here for Optic Gaming. Looks like Econ and Penguin now desperately trying to work together to turn A back into the favor of C9. And if they can do that, they'll be scoring once more. Look at Formal's numbers here. 14 and 7 in this game, showing up in a big way, and certainly the biggest that he's done all series long. Trades for Eco and Trippy. Dude in here, found already trying to pressurize C here, trying to turn the attention away. EPG. And Formal just traps it, son, a long hole here. Penguin's not gonna let him trap there for long, though. He's gonna push him. He's looking for two here. He finds two. Penguin's on the hunt. That's gonna be big here. BC now in control of Cloud9 and making sure to get that reset as well. Off to gaming, still leading by 12 points, but C9 slowly crawling their way oh. back yet again. Bound just manages to snap off the head of a player there. BC still in the hands. Of, just as the game is tied up, Formal makes a play onto B, but he's immediately removed from the stronghold. How about the next focus for both teams? It's up right now. It's a lead change yet again. Cloud9 will go into a very, very narrow lead by two points. By the way, back to back. Killing sprees there just about for Penguin. He's now 11 and 7. By the time you finish the sentence about the lead change, it's back <laughs> into the hands of Optic Gaming. That's just about how close this is. Penguin on a killing spree at the moment with this camouflage. Finds another kill as well. That should be A being turned back. And look at this. I love the play call from Cloud9. They say, Penguin, you've got camo. You go forward. We'll finish the cap. And now we can pressurize Optic. Playing this slowly. Look at this. Penguin needs to be so careful here with the camo. He now has help coming in. He will start to deal the damage. Brilliant. But it's almost. That's brilliant coming in from Optic Gaming, but Stella with that double kill is going to make things a little bit more interesting. Trippy left on his own, Bound in a 1v1, but Trippy puts him on his back. That's huge. Just look at the heat that we've seen from Bound all series long. They've actually kept Bound negative still in this game. It's a big 1v1 from Trippy. Big push on to A here from Optic. Eco's going to be able to get the reset. It's a big, big play from Kevin Smith and the rest of the crew. Eco currently sat at 8 and 14. If you're looking at stats, maybe that's not the most impressive, but it's those plays jumping in a stronghold, getting the resets. The death is almost worth it sometimes. Absolutely. Eco doesn't really care what's in the top right of the screen here right now. All he knows is they are leading by over 30 points. Bound picks up another one as well. That will be the opening kill. Opti traps and tower as well. The last two, and here comes Bound. Doesn't need to be asked twice. Hits the slide to get from A to B as quickly as possible. It's almost a signature of this man at this point. And look at this, oh they just cannot stop him. Look at Bound, he's in a 1v2, he's so confident, the assist comes in as well. This is what he's been doing all series long. He's finally positive for the first time in this game, but they are now up 207 to 154. Reset comes in as well, a triple cap. Here for Cloud9, 214 and rising, even with Optic inside of B and C. You have to wonder where these kills are gonna fall. If it's around B, and it's gonna allow Penguin to get the reset, then Cloud9 are gonna be feeling good. It's two for two on the map. They're even working on C as well here. Take a look here, Camel up bottom middle as well. 225 to 154. This game is slipping away from Optic Gaming. And look who's in the kill feed with another double kill. His name is Bound. If you didn't know him before this series, get to know him now because Cloud9 have another triple cap here. Oh my God, you won't believe this. Cloud9 was down by 13 kills earlier on. They were down 36 slaves to 23, and they are now trailing by 47 kills. My God, what a win. What a win. A dominant win. A Cloud9 esque win. We've got a series on our hands, and if you are thinking maybe this is going to be done in seven games, I've got some news for you. 3 1 to Cloud9. If they win this next game, we reset the bracket. The question was what Cloud9 would we get here? in Seattle, and they have showed up in a huge way. Out slaying their opponents in the end, they're 51 to 50, and a huge rally at the end of that match, just totally run away with the game, and like we heard during the listening, it felt like they were just putting all the pressure on Optic Gaming. Little moments, bits of timing. C9 are so good at it, just making sure that the last second there'll be a challenge on a stronghold, a little bit of damage across map, whatever it is, it formulates and equates to perfect teamwork a lot of the time. And now we have to talk about Optic in this situation, right? Because we were talking about the story coming into this event of how tough it is to get to the top of the pile, to win a championship. But as we all know, getting to the top is one thing, but staying there, it's even more difficult. It is even harder. And you have to wonder that Orlando win 
Did it come a bit too early in the season there as they already tasted victory, but they want the world championship. We'll take a look at some of the highlights from that game. Let's not forget, it was all optic all the way early on. As we said, they were out slaying C9 by 13 kills at one point. I mean, probably because of this man, Formal. The way he started this game, I'm sure the Cloud9 were, like, it was that good, the Cloud9 probably weren't that bothered by it, you know? Sometimes yeah. it's just like, yeah, he's hitting everything. There's not much we can do. We're not making bad plays. We're just getting cut down by Formal. But from this moment, the first triple cap, one thing that C9 did extremely well was never let it get out of hand. It was always within touching distance. And then towards the end of that game, when they got that triple cap, when they started to put Optic members one after one in the respawn screen, Optic didn't have an answer. They could not get back on the map. Absolutely not. And it just felt like they were just controlling the entire map. The plays from Bound at the end from Hydro to take on a 1v2 against APG and Formal. I mean, the confidence there, it's through the roof. C9 moving around the map beautifully as well. The speed at which they get from point A to point B is unmatched by many. And now, I mean, there's a story behind this map in itself. Optic perfect on Aquarius Slayer. C9 lost that game five versus Native Red to fall down to the elimination bracket. And I say lost, they got stomped on it. They got fi lost 50 to 35 against Native Red in that game type. So they will be very familiar with Aquarius Slayer just to set the table here. You will need to see Optic Gaming win the next three games straight in order to take the title. However, if Cloud9 wins one of those three games, we are going to a second best of seven, a grand final reset. Well, let me tell you, the energy in this room is starting to amp up a little bit as well. And that's what it's all about, that trophy in the middle of the stage. It's not often you get the opportunity to be in a grand final, let alone to go on and win the damn thing. And how must Optic Gaming be feeling here? On top of the world, not only coming into the event, but undefeated coming into this series. Only dropping one map. Now they've dropped three straight here. Triple their total map deficits in a matter of a 45 minute period. But you see, smiles on their faces. I, I think that's important. Yeah. I, I, I think that's really important. You know, we know how Optic want to respond, right? The, the worst thing you can do in this situation is get down on yourself. But in the battle of the main slayers, it's the rookie who is having the series argument of his life right now. I don't know if we've ever seen Lucid with a negative KD ever in any stat card that's been presented this season. This is the first time we've seen this, and Bound is absolutely popping off at a 1.46. He is such a huge factor in these last three wins for Cloud9. Incredible. It's, it's amazing, isn't it? Like, this guy before the season started had never attended a LAN. Now he's on the main stage. Now we know what he looks like. An optic at the moment, they know how it feels to go against him. They certainly do. Just when they thought they might shut down Bound, right? They have a huge killing, excuse me, a huge slaying lead in that last game. Bound is 0-4 to start the game. Maybe this is what they needed. Of course, Bound ends that game positive and they end the game on a huge spree. Even in his player cam, you can just take a look at Bound, right? Ready Talking to, to the team, ready to go. They know what's at stake here. Comes down to these final three games. Optic will need to win three straight, but let's remind ourselves they are entirely capable of doing that. They're coming into this series with 13 straight series wins. But let's remember as well, even if they don't win this next game, there's another seven games potentially in front of us. Right. A lot of Halo to be played here in Seattle before we crown a Halo World Champion, but it's time to get into a game. It's time to see a little bit more of that. It's Slayer, 50 kills to win. If Cloud9 take this game home, we reset the bracket. Optic, they need a lifeline. This is unbelievable here, and I think a lot of fans that have seen this tournament so far, you might not have expected the C9 lead at three to one at this stage in the grand finals, but that's exactly what we have ahead of us here. Aquarius Slayer will be your battleground. Optic need this game and two more to stay alive. Optic, of course, for that crazy comeback in the last few moments against Native Red. Native Red have had an influence on both the teams in this game, positively and negatively. But speaking of positive and negative, there's one man who's only in the positive. You can see his stats here. 1.46. Pretty much unbelievable. Unbelievable indeed. Here's Formal trying to wait top middle. He always gets away with the camo. Formal's able to stay alive there with the camo momentarily. He will pop that. And now, one kill lead for Cloud9. However, Formal with the play call. APG there to help him out as well, and I don't know how Formal managed to stay alive in that situation. He was the last member on the map for just a second for Optic. So there's one man you can't leave alive, his name 
is going to be formal. He does so much damage so consistently. Important for Cloud9 to shut him down almost immediately. Three dead for Optic Game, and they do just that. Lucid was your last player alive, and that will still be Cloud9 leading by just one kill. However, Heat Wave is in control. All four players of Optic Gaming are spawning back base. And that has become the weapon now for the swings, right? This is a power weapon on this game, not just from short range, but from medium range, even long range, if you can connect the bullets, you can lead that shot. Bound trying to be slippery. Customer that we know he can be to try and escape, but now he gets chased down. Seven to seven, Optic back into this. Three dead for Cloud9, like you said, Optic not just back in, back in the lead as well. We'll lead by one and try to slow this down. APG anchoring top mid, formal across the map, top pink as well. And let me tell you, this feels like a, a slayer for a lot of money. Yeah. And you ask him why, that's because it is! Penguin, secondary life at the baseball pitcher, he connects. Three dead yet again here. Formal is your last player alive, and just back and forth once again, we're tied up 10 to 10 here in game number five. Well, we're gonna be challenging, accepted. Stella knew the help was there. That's the only reason that Stella challenges in that situation. And as Cloud9 managed to get a one kill advantage, now the attention turns to top middle. The camo's about to be up. Bounce and take it down there. Lucid stays alive in the fridge. Once again, as you said, Heat Wave gonna play a huge role and it does in that engagement as well. Looks like Lucid's true. Oh. He looks away for a second. I think we all panicked for just a moment. Two dead here for Optic. One kill lead for Cloud9 now. He's gonna make the move on the camo though. Trippy might open things up. Eco's trying to move to top middle. Couple of nades going in, but you can see with the longer this battle goes on, the less utility these players have to play with. No more grenades. Can't flush those players off the top middle, and it looks like Eco might have just managed to get away with that. Bound is pushing in. Lucid does not hit the first oh. shot, and it costs him. It's a great push from Bound, and also Eco now with the camo. Can Cloud9 extend this lead by just, just a bit? I love watching Bound play. The confidence, mate. Who does that? Runs across the map and takes the 1v1. Eco causing the distraction top mid, and Bound just thinks maybe that distraction is enough for me to get that first shot. Finds out the heat wave is there, uses the thrust to get away. It's just perfect. Halo Infinite 1v1. I, I mean, the man is playing out of his mind at the moment. He is now three kill lead for them. Camel runs out just in the nick of time here, and that's not good timing. Trippy forces the trade. Eco will get it. In the end, it will still be a three kill lead for the side of Cloud9. Heat wave has been almost exclusively in the hands of C9 as well. Trippy trying to bait a little bit of damage. Survives for now. Bound just slowing things down for a second, waiting for that help to come in, and this is why Bound has improved so much in such a short time. Previously, Bound might have flown in there, knowing he had the heat wave and a 1v1 opportunity, but this time he waits for the help, and that help turns into a 1 to 0 trade instead of maybe a 1 to 1. We tried to go in there, Formal will get the better of it, but I agree, Bound. We've heard him talking about how he's worked on that exact timing with this team for quite some time, and it is paying off in the end. Cloud9 now leading 22 to 19 in what would be a series resetting game. Let's get into an Astro listening for Cloud9. Yep. APG. Doing yellow. Bounce pitching, bounce pitching, bounce pitching base. Bounce pitching base. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's right here, right here weak. Two shot, two shot on P1. Okay, okay, shocks are up. Shocks two shot P1. We made it, we made it, we made it. Pick one again, there's one in there. On the right, shocks are up. Shock jump probably. I got shocked, I got shocked. Two in the base, two in the base. Uh, yo, yo, I'm looking at you, Camo, I'm looking at you. Watch out, 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 I'm actually watching to kill me. Watch my trying to kill me. Okay, no, no, okay. I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Getting out the blue P. Getting out to it. Shock shocks, shocks are up now. I'm going yellow. I have shocks. I have shocks. Looking in the closet. Charger, 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 sound, drums. Watch the drums. Listen. Two yellow flags. One's yellow fridge. Yeah, two yellow flags. Two yellow flags. I'm here above you, Brayden. Tell me if they cross. Can you tell me if they cross? Nice kill. Nice. Yeah, two yellow flags. Yeah, I'm going to two. I'm shocking their base. I'm shocking their base. Okay, okay. Watch the back left. Watch the back left. I'm going to the fridge. Watch the fridge. Okay. They're over there. They're bored. Loose it. 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 Trips. 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 Trips.
One shot on the pistol. One shot yeah, on the pistol. Yeah, yeah, yeah. down. He down. He's down. He's there. He's on 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 there. He's yellow window. He's on out of the comms and into the gunfire is 36 to 30 now. C9 off by six. Every kill is massive at this point. And with Stella putting APG into the death screen, that lead has extended once more. Seven kill lead now. Look at Stella's 12 and seven here with a thrust in hand and now starting to run away. This is the home stretch and C9, you could say, has never looked better. Come off as well. Stella challenges. Penguins there as well. It is just a unit working. Almost as one mind as Stella would say, every challenge there's help. Every push, the assistance is there before we shut down the camo. The camo is burnt and out of commission. The Bronte Gaming wants to stay alive in this first grand final. They need to step it up and they need to step it up right now. They're down by nine. But the pressure just keeps coming in. Eco and Stella pick up two. Bounds already up to top pick. He's got a heat wave and Optica trapped in the fridge. Look at this from C9. Bound knows exactly where he needs to be. He's just commanding pick side again. Picks up another one. See if he can clean up formal and Fringer seconds away. Optic Gaming staying alive, but Cloud9 wants to close this out and close it out fast. They're only six kills away. Positive four for Bound in this game as well. 14 kills, once again leading the lobby. Formal's doing what he can. 13 and 11, but there's another kill as the 45 kill mark is crossed by Cloud9, they are closing in. It's one team fight away for C9 to send us to a bracket reset. Now 47 here, only oh two kills goodness. to go. Mega 48, Penguins 13 and eight. Two more kills to go for Cloud9, make it one. One kill to go. Eco's managed to find where the spawns are coming in as well. All of Optic just trapped inside of this closet at the moment. Cloud9 is just gonna get a trade. One push is all they need. Stella's gonna go in first, big damage. Doesn't take damage himself. The defensive name down, come in. But Optic, they're not gonna be able to do it. C9 reset the bracket here in Seattle. Wow. C9 fans in the building, happy to see that. That's a big four game straight from Cloud9. After an early Optic Gaming lead in this series, they wanted to see none of that. And shush, 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 says Stellar. He is here for one thing, and that is a Halo World Championship. We are going to a second best of seven. The bracket is reset, and after what happened yesterday, all of the insane game fives, the reverse sweeps, at this point, are we surprised? Cloud9 send us to a shootout. One best of seven now to decide who will be the Halo World Champion. One best of seven for $400,000 here, first place prize. And it looks like all Cloud9 all the way in those last few games. And my God, what a Grand Finals one. Like you said, there's no other way this Grand Finals could have gone. After the day we had so far, after the entire weekend that we've had here at the Halo World Championship, this is the way the story had to go. The top two teams, of course, fighting in one final series to crown a champion. It's been that intense. I had to lose the jacket. I think we're actually back in camera. I had to lose the jacket. It's too warm to keep jumping about and enjoying this action in the way that I am at the moment. C9 on fire. And here's some of the highlights from that Aquarius Slayer. This man's just playing out of his mind at the moment, Bound. I know I keep hyping on about it, but the difference between when we saw him at the start of the year to now, it shows you why C9 took that risk, right? It was a situation maybe they didn't want to happen, but they have found gold. They have struck gold. They absolutely have, and in the teamwork category, I also want to highlight, we talked a lot about Bound and Stellar in that game. Let's not forget, Penguin was about positive five. Eco was just about negative two, but with the most assists on the team. Once again, Cloud9 is spreading all of the kills, damage, and assists across the team in a way that they did not do in Orlando. And it has shown to be hugely successful for them in Seattle in four straight wins against Optic Gaming. Now, the concerning thing here for Optic as well is the manner of those defeats as well. It feels like game after game, that gap has started to increase. The loss seems to be a little bit, the win, excuse me, seems to be a little bit further away from them. C9 seems to be just taking over this series, and I almost feel like the, the break here between we go into the second best of seven is going to benefit Optic more than it is anyone. Absolutely, I think they need that mental reset. We haven't seen Optic on the receiving end of a loss like that in quite some time now, especially in that fashion. I think, Mark, we also got to mention that Optic was leading in almost every single game that we just saw in the last stretch, right? They are throwing away leads that Cloud9 is somehow bringing back in these heroic efforts, and they are here to play. That is for sure. I love the way that Cloud9 are just applying pressure as well. As soon as they get that pick, you see the 
They don't worry about map positioning too much. It's how quickly can all three of us collapse onto our next target and make it such a difficult situation. And you might be expecting a green wall if you were coming into this tournament. Well, it's dressed in blue, this series layout. Cloud9, after that first game going to Optic, win four in a row to send us to another best of seven. And look at that series layout. I think if we're honest, and I think a lot of Halo fans are with us here, we were hoping maybe we'll get a grand finals reset at the last event of the year. We haven't had too many this year, that's for sure. And certainly not in LAN play. But how about getting one for the Halo World Championship? That is a hell of a series layout. Cloud9 just lays down the hammer four games in a row and they reset the bracket. We'll take a look at a full series recap from your first best of seven. I mean, the standout stats, the ones that jump off the page. You're looking at the man who's crowned the MVP, right? 0.87 for KD in that series. That's gonna have to change from Lucid. The same could be said for Trippy, the longtime duo. These guys have been teaming pretty much since 2016. That first championship that came their way just a few weeks ago. Well, this is another level. With yeah. all due respect to what happened in Orlando, this is the biggest prize ball of the year. This is the most pressure of the year. And this is where your performance matters most. Absolutely. And let's not forget, both Trippy and Lucid were coming into this grand final on a 1.28 KD. Fantastic numbers in the tournament so far. Now they're both silenced with a KD below 1.0, as you saw in that first grand final and we have never seen a grand finals reset in a halo infinite major and we have one here on championship sunday at the halo world championship shout out to our graphics up in the back making sure that they got the graphic redone and added in the grand final reset at the end because like you say we haven't seen that before but this is the road that both teams have taken to get here and it's so fascinating just to take a second to actually look at this right from the quarterfinals because on the optic side, it's nothing but 3-0s. 3-0, 3-0, 3-0. Taking down G1, Sentinels, Native Red. Close games in there for sure. But the series overall is not close. On the other side of the bracket though, look how hard it's been for Cloud9. I mean, game fives all the way through the elimination bracket. Fights against the likes of FaZe Clan to get themselves into this position. And you can see here, even Ascent, my European brothers, they pushed them all the way as well with that game that they took, but I think the big thing for Cloud9 for me is, with all due respect to FaZe, we've seen Sentinels and C9 going back and forth all year long. That performance, first game of the day against Sentinels, the 3-0 beating that they gave them, it wasn't really a close series. I think that just made them believe once more that having beaten two-time world champions, maybe it's their time to become two-time world champions. I think so, and also look at the prioritization of the Slayer game types, right? Let's not forget, Slayer's won Optic Gaming Orlando, you could say. And however, as we take a look at the game types in this series, Cloud9 controlled both of those Slayers in the end with great dominance. And we'll see now as we get ready for a second best of seven between Optic Gaming and Cloud9, we wouldn't have it any other way. One more series for the title. Well, starting off, we're gonna go over to Recharge once more. We saw some strongholds, but now, it's going to be oddball. Strongholds, of course, went in the favor of Cloud9. But the interesting thing for me is map number two, that's Slayer Catalyst. That is the map where back in Orlando, Optic Gaming won the chip. That's going to be a good sight for them to see. Just a little friendly memory, you know, it just gets those good vibes back. Game number three is going to be Strongholds Live Fire. That's going to be fascinating when we get there and we head over to King of the Hill Street. And you can all read at home, you can all read the arena, you can see where we're going after that, but I I'm not sure we're going to get right to the end. Although, you know what, actually, I'll take that back. There's a really good let's chance go. we're going all the way to game seven. Well, let's, yeah, let's go all the way to game seven if we have our way here, and players now have to lock in and ice up for what may be a grueling second best of seven between these two. They've been exchanging blows all series long, but really, Cloud9 runs away with the first grand finals in a Best performance we've seen from the C9 boys in quite some time. Let's take a look also at Bound versus Trippy. Like we said, Trippy and Lucid pretty close in terms of KD in this series so far. And they have been shut down in a way that's pretty uncharacteristic for the Optic Gaming team. And to be honest, uncharacteristic of players like Trippy and Lucid at this late stage of the season. There's going to be a big focus, if we're honest, on both Trippy and Lucid in this series. And the question of can Bound repeat what he did in the first grand final? Yeah, I mean, the magnifying glass doesn't get any bigger than it does in a World Championship final, right? Your statistics will be picked away out. Even if you feel like you're doing everything right, when it comes down to those numbers, it's certainly going to tell a story. And Bound on the other side of things, he is relishing the situation. It's almost as if this is what 
the moment he was waiting for in the season just to unleash what we've all been waiting to see. That is that perfect mix of aggression, but also knowing when to slow things down and help out a teammate. I mean, this is every Halo player's dream. Let's not kid ourselves, right? Oh. Make a name for yourself online, get picked up by a top team on LAN, and find yourself at a World Championship Finals where you just dropped a 1.46 KD against Optic Gaming, the heavy favorites. This is truly every competitive Halo player's dream. Bound is living it on the main stage right now alongside the rest of the C9 roster. They have been fantastic in these grand finals so far. Now they find themselves only four games away, but you got to think Optic's been locked in. They're going to get ready for this because when their backs are against the wall, often that's when they look their best. And that's when you're looking to your leaders, right? That's like when you're looking to a man like Form or someone who's been here before. He's been in those big series. He knows what it takes to mentally reset, to bounce back, to breathe some confidence back through some teammates. And on the other side of things, I can't think of many better tutors than Ego. If you're bound and you're coming onto a new lineup and you're, you know, looking to learn how to get into a grand final, to win a Halo World Championship, to win a major championship, Eco is the man that you go to. He knows everything there is to know about winning. And especially if we talk about Eco, he talks about how when they go back in the lab after a tournament, there are very specific things they look at and they work on. Did we ever see that that was the case in that grand final? Keep in mind, we saw Cloud9 get absolutely slapped by Optic Gaming in Orlando. It was not even close. However, it's a complete turning of the tables here so far in Seattle. Cloud9 clearly doing the homework to get ready for Optic Gaming, and they now find themselves in a bracket reset. Best of seven for the World Championship trophy. Well, the Optic Gaming fans certainly maybe been quieting down a little bit after that series, but if they're gonna get back into it, they're gonna have to get behind their squad now and lift them back up. For C9, the same could be said. If the crowd is behind them, can push them over the line, then maybe Eco, Stella, can pick up their second Halo World Championship ring. The question is, what kind of wake-up call was that for Optic Gaming? Are they ready here in this second best of seven after losing four games straight? Can they bounce back and bring it to Cloud9? Here we are, your second best of seven at the Halo World Championship. Wouldn't have it any other way. Whoever wins this best of seven, will get their hands on that World Championship trophy. We're starting off with the point of view of Formal. This man is gonna have responsibility on his shoulders to mentor those players on his squad through these tough times. A win here for Optic, and all of a sudden, things change once more. We talked about Trippy here. Man on your screen with the camo needs to convert here alongside Lucid and put up the big numbers that we're used to seeing from them, but it's going to be three dead on the side of Optic Gaming. Also here for Lucid, doesn't matter. Four shot coming in from Penguin. That'll be enough to take down Lucid. Stella has the on ball immediately back towards Pipe, and look at this perimeter setup already from Cloud9. They have got recharged lockdown. 10 points on the board already here in Ball. Like I said, Pipe's hold, nades are coming in. Bound does so well to only take minimal damage from those grenades. He needs to hold Whirlpool, but two fall, so he knows he is the lone survivor. He'll be taken down three dead. Stella's your last player alive. Speaking of the lone survivor, he's gonna fall as well, so a perfect break comes in from Optic Gaming. 16 seconds, all the Cloud9 managed to muster up for what looked like some great map positioning. Now Optic have the opportunity to do the same to them. Shot rifle also in the hands of Trippy here. He can make something work. Yeah, it's also perfect timing there. They don't let really any points on the board here. Here we are tied just about there. Oh, Damn, Trippy! Picks up another one as well. That's three dead, four dead for Cloud9 again. Formal's your last player alive. Formal should move in to pick up this oddball as well. And by doing that, you will see a lead exchange here. It's a slender lead. Or maybe Cloud9 are going to shut it down. They cut him down at the pass. Great pressure there, as you say. Formal thought he maybe was going to get away with that ball. Instead, the kills will be traded out. The ball will eventually be picked up by Cloud9 yet again. You know him with that ball back in pipes. A couple of trades means that Formal's going to have to wait here. A little bit of help to come his way. There is that help, and it's helping the form of APG. One of the most experienced players. He's been doing it for so, so long, but also he's never felt repulsive before in Halo titles, and now he is. 1v1 here for Eco for just a second. Oh, Eco wins the 1v1 against Formal as Bound is spawning glass as well. That might be a few more seconds on the board for C9. Leading 30 to 15, Trippy with his second camo of the game. Let's see what he can do here. Very interesting here from Optic, but brilliant from Cloud9. I was about to say Optic, allow ball time to go into the hands of C9. They focus their attention towards getting that camouflage, towards getting that power up to break. But C9 just fly across the map, they get the information and they eliminate Trippy before he's even fired a bullet. You can tell Bound is ready for this long haul push as well. 
Just watching glass, watching low gold, making sure that no one comes through. They will maintain the man advantage after this kill. Still too dead for Optic. Cloud9 is continuing to steamroll. They're up 59 to 15. Round just scarfing back as well. He sees the information, he sees the cross. He thought now it's, I know where the push is coming from Optic. I'm trying to get into position to help my teammate. Stella falls though. That means that Bound will not have the timing here. That will be picks for Optic Gaming. Two players picked off. Penguin now is going to get trapped as well. Three fall for Cloud9. Eco has that ball, but somehow, with all the kills going down, look at Eco. He managed to scrape up an extra five, six, seven seconds to put Cloud9 in a great position in round number one. Yeah, and that five, six, seven seconds, as you said, brings up to 82 points right now. They have four times the points of Optic Gaming. Optic Gaming needs to make sure they are controlling the map here in terms of kills, in terms of damage, and these key sight lines to get back into this round one. Trippy got the ball in his hand, but this is somewhat of a transitional setup here from Opti. Trippy wants to get that ball back to pipes, and that's why you're seeing that rotation now back towards the left shoulder of Formal. One shot here from Formal. And all of a sudden, the map's gonna open up, make it two. Eco, he's gonna peek. Doesn't get deleted, though. Let's see here, Trippy saw his ball on pipes. Look at Lucid, by the way. Lucid was just sitting elevator. He's still sitting elevator to pinch the batteries and Whirlpool and control angles. Now he's rotating into C to pinch the other way. Now look at the score here, 82 to 53. Optic Gaming clawing back. Oh. APG shuts down Eco with that shock rifle, but my eyes are drawn to that camouflage. It was on the map a few moments ago. Did anyone manage to pick it up? I think it might have been bound. I think it might have been shut down. So no one on the map now with the camo. C9 trying to make the break. Penguin's king. Gonna get caught out by those frag grenades though. The remote detonation comes in. Eco now finds himself on his own. And Optic Gaming are starting to rally back here. What was just a 60 point lead is now just about a 10 point game here. C9 gets the first kill to get extra damage as well. We might see this ball played in a moment if things get chaotic, but it's a nice win from Stella. Stella is just locked in at the moment. Eco with his long time duo picking up kills as well. Beatdown comes in to remove the shields. Eco there to clean it up. Stella and Eco working. Simultaneously at the moment to clean up these kills. Nobody can deal with C9 at the back of this turbine. My god, just perfectly timing bait and switches from Cloud9 there. They will keep the man advantage over Optic Gaming 85 to 71. It's just a 14 point game. The difficulty here for both teams is that ball is in such an awkward position. Ball taken. It's going to be Optic who pick it up. Players, and you know that the play call coming in from Lucy now is play tight to me. Make this as difficult as possible for Optic. To be easy deaths here for Cloud9. C9 have to work away, but here comes the flank from Formal. Bound does everything he can there. He tries to watch. Now look at the game. It's all tied up here at the 85 mark. Ball will be played bottom middle. Ball gets reset. Two minutes 25 left in this game. The next hold could be the hold that wins the game. Formal versus Penguin. Formal with a huge 1v1 win. Want to come back from Optic Gaming, as we said, down by 60. Essentially a 60-point straight run to get right back in this, though. Three dead. Trippy's your last player alive. So we should fall here to bound as well, but where is that oddball? Who's in position? One thing we do know from our point of view, of course, is that bound gets that next power up. He's got the camo, but we saw how quickly C9 were able to eliminate it. Bound needs to make a play. Ooh, bound shoots early on Lucid there. Lucid ain't always there. Oh, it's because oh, Lucid's weak up top, of course. Elusive. Look at him run away here. Trying to get away. Find him. Oh, Lucid, he's not afraid. Challenges Bound, even though Bound has camo. Finally, that's cleaned up. Bound with great pressure. Almost gets taken down with the camo. We are still one point away here. Pango will grab that off of the two dead for Optic Gaming. It's a rotate all the way to the back seat. This is brilliant. This is something we're seeing more and more of now, using that triple stack just to give the cover from the spawners over elevator and towards the pipes. But the push now comes in from Optic. It's a little bit of a last second push. Penguin's thinking about play balls, and C9 might have just gifted a setup here to Optic. All four dead. Look at the clock here. Right now, you're going to see a lead change. Optic Gaming will take the lead here with 1.22 left. This could be the final hold. Optic had the ball in their hands. The push has to come in now from Cloud9, and I don't think they're going to be able to get vision onto Trippy. Optic take the first round in our second best of seven. What a comeback from Optic Gaming. As we said, it was about 80 to 20 there, and somehow they win that first round. Maybe that's the momentum. Maybe that's the spark that Optic Gaming needed as they head into our second round of ball. A comeback is almost, in my opinion, feels better sometimes than just yes. a dominating win. It shows that you can put the pressure back onto C9. It shows that you can ask questions of C9 after losing all of those games straight in the first series. And now you're seeing maybe a little bit of desperation from C9. Optic have that camo. It's loose. It's time to step up. 
I agree. I think you find that belief again. And speaking of belief, how about Lucid? 19 and 8 in this game. We talked about how he needed to step up in the second reset of the grand finals. He's 20 and 9. That last series was a wake up call for Lucid. What a round one. What a comeback from Austin Gaming. Lucid in this first round has gone from almost anonymous in the first series to back to the monster that we know he can be. It's two more for him. He's 22 and 9. My God, and if there was ever a question of his KD, as there was at the last series, he has answered in a huge way. He's 23 and 9. Let's get ready to go into an Optic Gaming listening. Good shit, guys. It's all good, all good. Check some nice lead. Ooh, and just as we join them there, looks like up there will drop out on the Cloud9 sign. So it sounds like it will be a reset there. And of course, uh, not exactly what we hope to see in that second game. And just as we join that listening, up to gaming leading by a few points, but the bigger point is the fact that they're able to get that first round on the board. And like we said, maybe a little bit of belief. You see the Cloud9 can lead in a very big way, and I couldn't agree more. I think that comeback win means more than a dominant round one win. I think that's the spark up to gaming might have needed after losing four games straight. Yeah, completely agree with you. I think it's so important in those situations. We could have seen a lot, a lot of teams might have folded, right? Yeah. A huge lead for Cloud9. Everyone starts trying to make hero plays, but Optic, one thing they've honed in on is making sure that is never the case when it comes to those big moments. That's what brought them the championship back in Orlando. And you just saw there's something more about this Optic team. It's not just, you know, skill. It's not just teamwork. There's heart there as well. And there's a little bit more steel. I talked through the season about the battle scars that have been gained by this team, by this lineup. The close losses, the heartbreaking losses, the series which you felt Optic surely has to win. Yeah. And they come out on the wrong side of. That teaches you more than just your game. That teaches you mentally how you recover from those moments. And Optic is showing they are here for the long series. Absolutely. As we look back on this season, there's countless times where Optic was down by 10. 12 kills in a Slayer, and they brought it back. You heard mid-season Lucid in interviews talking about how they have specifically looking at, been looking at situations where their back is against the wall where they have to fight out of tough situations, and how do they master that? This is the ultimate challenge, right? Here you are in the World Championship Finals. You just lost four straight in a tournament where you had only lost one game so far. That's an absolutely wild trend to have to follow now, and we'll see what they can do in the Grand Finals. But they dig deep, and they find that first round of recharge on them. Yeah, I mean, it's even more shocking for Optic, right? Because they've lost not even, you know, it's not the case that they've lost series because they haven't lost series, but they've barely lost games. Yeah. So to lose four in a row, that's like a month and a half's worth of losses for Optic, it feels like, especially on land. And you can see that everybody who's here in Seattle, by the way, is still giving it the baked beans. They love the fact that we've got a bracket reset here, and I think they're enjoying the fact that Optic is showing some life as well. Yeah, I think so. This is set up to be a pretty fantastic grand finals reset, and I think a lot of jaws dropped on that first series, certainly on the op Optic Gaming side of the stage, but even in the room here in Seattle, and likely all of you joining us from home as well, maybe not what you expected to see after Optic Gaming's performance so far, not only here this weekend, but also over the past few months of professional Halo. They have looked unstoppable. Cloud9, though, have put not just a crack in the green wall, they've taken a sledgehammer to the green wall, and they're looking to do it again. Hopefully we can get back into this game as soon as possible. Just to remind us, mind you all at home and in the arena exactly where we find ourselves. Optic will be up one to zero. When we do get into the restart, you see players all back in the lobby. Just look over the shoulder there of APG screen. And Optic locked in and ready to close out game number one. For C9 though, again, maybe this little break is good for them. Just gives them a chance to rethink where they kind of let that one slip. Because for the majority of that game you were looking, you're like, C9, they seem to have this round under their belts. Right, they certainly did. It looked like they were picking up where they left off after that first grand final. And you think back to APG's quote on the main stage after winning HCS Orlando. And one of the first things he did within 30 seconds of hoisting that trophy was, it's not done. There's one more job to do. You've also heard Formal say it in the process. This is everything for this team. This is everything for the Green Bull. So we can just get an update from the back. Optic will need 88 points in this round. They did have a 12 point advantage in order to take the second round and take a game that's in front of us. For C9, they will need all 100 points, of course, as they were down by that 12 point deficit. So just keep that in mind when you're watching that game clock at the bottom as it ticks up. 88 points, the magic number. I'm glad it's, I haven't been good with numbers today, as we saw on the desk a little bit earlier, but, but this I like is great. Yeah, that's this, just two of the same one. This is great work from you, I like that. I'm really, I'm trying to. 
of the gaming fans here, not just in the front row, but all across the venue here. Packed house at the Halo World Championship in Seattle. Crowd goes way back, all the way back here to the casting booth. Do want to check in on the stats as well. Right before that game reset, Optic Gaming out slaying Cloud9 61 to 43. It was great, great slaying and map control throughout those rounds. It gives us a chance here just to reflect on what has been a crazy week here in Seattle, right? I mean, yesterday was one of the most insane experiences I think that anyone who's watched competitive Halo would have ever been seen. a part of. Yeah, and reverse sweeps, game fives, and then here in Seattle itself, what an event this has been, Andy. I mean, we've got all the merch booths, we've got so much to do. We've had the Xbox stage, we've had famous faces from Halo past and present. It's been a wonderful time for sure. As you see on screen there, Optic Gaming will lead one to zero in round. Just in case you're just joining us, welcome to the grand finals of the Halo World Championship. Optic needs 88 points in this round to close it out due to the 12-point advantage at the time of the reset. Cloud9 will need 100. If Cloud9 were to win this round, we would go into a sudden death round number three. We would in a deed. It looks like the players just get a few technical things sorted out here, making sure when we get back into the game, we don't have any more problems and we can get this grand final back underway. But one player we haven't really mentioned so far in the series is the man who's on your screen. APG, quietly going about his business, but not having the huge impact that we've seen from him in some of those game types a little bit earlier on in the bracket. Yeah, certainly also worth mentioning, APG actually leading the team in Slayer KD up until this series. He was a huge part of that. In Orlando, it was actually trippy, but here it's been APG leading specifically in Slayers. Now, as we talked about, keep in mind, two out of the four wins that we saw from Cloud9 were Slayers. In that last reset, they will continue to be a huge part of this series, and I think if APG can find the same same numbers he's been putting down all weekend. Optic has a very good chance of taking the title, but it will not be easy. Another thing to highlight here for Optic, who better to sit behind you, right? Who's going to give you that guidance? Who's going to be the grand final? Who's won uh, so many championships? I can barely add it. I, I've got back to numbers again. It's never a safe place for me to be. That's, of course, Lunchbox, right? He's been in these situations. He'll have the perfect words for his squad here just to refocus them ahead of this next game. Absolutely. Whenever you hear the listen, it's such a privilege with a guy like Lunchbox behind him. Like we said, whether they're down by 10 in a Slayer, it doesn't matter. He focuses them up on exactly what they need to prioritize. And when you've got the cool heads of all four players on Optic as well, they generally find a way to dig deep and bounce back. However, it was all Cloud9 in our first grand final. Optic Gaming showing signs of life, and you have to argue signs of life that they desperately needed after that first grand final. Question is, they, can they continue it on? It's first to four here in our second grand final reset. We apologize, of course, for the little delay that's going on right now. The Halo has been so good, it seems to have uh, caused a tech problem at the moment. One of the PCs has exploded or something, but hopefully we can get it underway as soon as we can. Which thing's going to be the guy to spark one of these teams back into life? I think it's gotta be Lucid. Let's not forget Lucid's numbers. At the time of reset, we still have them. He was 24 and nine. He's back to the Lucid form that we're used to. We always see him dropping insane numbers all the way to the point where we've kind of really come accustomed to that. 24 and nine is an unbelievable stat line in a second grand final, especially after losing four straight. What a way to bounce back for him. I told you numbers was my strong too. Uh, yeah, I was worried. When you started but to handle one, the numbers, I was worried. This one is not my fault. There is a correction from the stage referees, so it's gonna be 94 points that Optic Gaming need. So okay. just a six point advantage when the tech error came in. Cloud9 will need 100. So there's confirmation. You'll there see you it in a graphic pretty soon. That's, that makes it official, although it doesn't technically because there was a graphic a minute ago. Uh, interesting there, though. That likely is why players were talking to station referees there and a little bit of an extended delay here. You saw station referees behind each team. You saw Eco talking to a ref. You also saw APG as well. Likely the fact they wanted to check the tape, see exactly how much advantage there was. And as you said, only a six-point lead. Optic will need 94. Cloud9 will need 100 in this round. C9 managed to get that 100. We go to a round three where both teams will need 100. But if Optic get that 96 points, then all of a sudden, Things are back in the favor of Optic Gaming. A little switch on the spawns as well. To make sure things are fair here. But as we can see on our screens, we're back underway. And C9, well, they're feeling the pain at the moment. Estella will be the fourth player eliminated. And Lucid reintroduces himself to the grand final with a triple. And what do we say? It's got to be Lucid here who steps up. He's doing it again. Incredible performance in that first game. Has to do a double grapple on the shock. It's not a problem. He will now control that weapon. And it's a solid start here for Optic Gaming. APG in the feed as well. 3v3 on the map. Lose it. Turns away just the wrong second there, but makes oh, that yeah. ball roll away as he does. The scholar bounce. Stella's gonna challenge. 
Lucid fancies a little bit of this himself, but Stella manages somehow to hold on. Lucid almost goes over the top there in a flashy play with the grapple. He'll eventually be taken down. That's two dead, so it's up to Trippy and APG to lock down Pipes the goal. Ooh, Eco sneaking behind enemy lines. Manages to pick up one. Penguin's there for the support. And it looks like C9 have won the battle for Pipes. So you can see that off ball is going to be brought back towards Pipes from bound. Last player alive now is Lucid. And you can see that Eco's already sniffed him out. Yeah, but right there, Lucid somehow gets a kill on top gold. Bound has to now chase that. Look at Lucid, this is how difficult he is to kill. Finally, he gets taken down by Bound, but it opens up some opportunity just like that. That's a perfect example of Lucid staying alive so that his team can push. Brilliant. For Lucid, quite simply, buying those extra seconds to make Cloud9 overextend, put themselves in positions where spawners could put damage down. And from there, C9 barely got any time on the board, even though they got three dead almost immediately. This time, they charged down APG to make sure it take fresh Four dead from Optic Gaming. But there's the respawn once again. The ball now back in the hands of C9. And they're scoring. And that is ticking up over that double digit mark. Trippy tries to take advantage there, and eventually he will get the kill. But the ball should be rotated right now based on the position that we're seeing. Yeah, ball is rotated to C. That's a perfect rotate there for Cloud9. Formal might have the shock in hand, but he doesn't have the angles just yet. He's got some help. And that's going to be in the form of Trippy. The camo's up as well. Not sure who managed to pick that one up with the way that the kills have been going. You would expect it would be Optic. And that is indeed the case. It's 26 to 12 here. Optic Gaming have an opportunity to pick up the slaves to create some space on the map, though. Lucid with that camo. He's going to pick up some nice shots onto Stella to give a two man advantage on the map to Optic. Also, Lucid with you. Oh my gosh, he gets taken down. Three dead, though, for Cloud9, even though Lucid falls. This should be an opportunity for Optic Gaming to get more points on the board. They're right now outslaying 20 to 14, and a few points away from tying the game as well. Yeah, pretty significant if you look at it like this way, right? Yeah. Especially the amount of time that has actually gone, but Cloud9 starting to answer back now. Lucid left on his own, and Lucid, once again, somehow left on his own, manages to at least get a kill, take someone down to the grave, but C9 with the break. They have the ball in their hands, and now you see Penguin getting a lot of information, but unfortunately for him, it's too much information. Two players fly him and make this a more comfortable position and hold him to C9. The timing there was much better from C9. Even though Lucid was the last player alive, they kill him really quickly. They grab the ball right away, and they're able to then play the ball. That will give Cloud9 a little bit more of a substantial lead in the comeback. They're up 36 to 21. Eco, one of the last two alive, though, on pipes. Reminded that Optic Gaming only need 96 points here as well to close this game out. Be the full 100 for Cloud9. At the moment, it's looking like Cloud9 have control of pipes. It's somewhere where you always want to be focusing your attention for a team because that is where that ball will ideally be brought up for that setup. That is where you're going to deny those lines of sight and be able to hold that old ball without too much of a challenge. But C9 do get challenged. Optic. They take control of pipes now. And with that grapple, Trippy's going to bring that ball back to elevator. But Penguin manages to cut it down. Wow, Penguin stays alive. Not only that, he goes from top gold to get the angle to kill the ball in Whirlpool as well. That will still give Cloud9 a man advantage. Bow now flies in. Everything having to do with Penguin's play there. Three dead, though. Optic Gaming responds right away. Penguin is your last player alive. Again, it will finally translate to time for Optic Gaming. They're down by 10. The first pick, though, once again, is going to be Penguin. Eco still in the death screen, though, meaning it's a 3v3 on the map. How Optic is set up at the moment. There's going to be multiple BRs onto Stella as he tries to make his move in. Bound finds one. Formal will take him down as well, and even though he's got an objective in his hand, Formal is not adverse to killing everything around him. Three dead here, Penguin's your last player he alive. Formal, of course he gets the stick, and that will be a rotate here for Optic Gaming. That stick is huge. As we said, the last player alive, you cannot let them continue to do damage. Optic Gaming will now go into the lead here, 45 to 36. Sheer Halo brilliance there from Formal. Manages to pick up two kills initially while having that old ball in his hands. And then turns his attention with no shields. Completely cuts off the opportunity for C9 to push through towers with that stick. But still a lead here for Optic Gaming. Cloud9 trying to get their selves into a position to get that old ball back with a 2 2 split across the map at the moment. APG versus Eco is massive. Forward picks up one as APG wins that fight. Trippy with the immediate play ball there. I love that from Trippy. He's taking no chances. Even though the pressure was light, they play the ball immediately. These are the world championships. You don't risk your play balls. Three dead for the side of Cloud9 for a moment. Optic Gaming will continue scoring 65 to 36. All of a sudden, that score is starting to tick up faster and faster. If you're a C9 player and you're a C9 fan, you see it getting further and further out of your reach. But here comes the break attempt. 
Two dead, three dead. Make it loose in the last player alive. But as we know, even though he's got not ball in his hands, this guy is difficult to finish off. Bound will get there alongside Stella to make sure he's taken out quickly. Now C9 have the ball in their hands, and not only that, look at the setup they've got. Yeah, two man advantage as well. Formal has to fight out of this against Penguin. That's a big, big 1v1 to get control. And look at the damage on Eco. He can't stay alive. However, the damage is done. It should be an opportunity for Optic to play off the back of that. A lot of the time we talk about the likes of Bound, we talk about the likes of Stella with that shock rifle. eco has got it in his hands now and he needs to make it work. He chases down APG. A couple of headshots here from Eco, and all of a sudden this round gets completely blown back out of proportion. And Penguin gets the power up as well, so C9 are fully locked and loaded. And they might be inching closer to maybe turning this one over. Look at the rotate as well. The ball is played by Bound onto double stacks. It's a great play. They're just going to set the ball down as they start to lose the man advantage. Penguin with a lot of pressure here. Still has that camera to play with. Reminder the Optic. Getting closer and closer to that magical mark they need to take this round. And of course, to take this game, there's a little tickle on the shoulder for the shot cry for the trippy. Trippy's going to turn his attention to the ball, but maybe it wasn't the time to do it because the pick now comes in. Optic Gaming find themselves too dead. Penguin moves in on that up ball, and all of a sudden, C9 have control here. Oh my god, what a comeback from C9. Down by 20 or so points earlier. Penguin's able to stay alive. Eco also gets a double kill. And based off that double kill alone, this could be the round. This could be the round. Stella set up on this head glitch as well. A trade from Bound is brilliant for C9. It's 10 points for C9 to tie up this oddball game and send us into a sudden death final round. Three points to go here, 97 on the board. Penguin likely just gonna hold this, maybe play the ball off himself. 99. Here, 99, 100. Cloud9 will tie the game and we will go into a sudden death. Round number three to decide game one. Elimination. Round number one was a crazy comeback from Optic. Round this time it's two. C9 who make that comeback themselves. We're straight back into the like, action though. Cloud9 looking to bounce and maybe get some entry damage here for them. Two players weak from Optic, but none of them being able to be taken down is three dead for C9. It's a great opening from Optic Gaming here. Trippy's also going to have Camo. He's had Camo to play with a lot in this game. Now he's also got the shock in hand. Let's see what he can do. Trippy just looking for targets at the moment, looking for anyone they can cause a problem to. Penguin's going to get that information. Smart decision here to grapple away and keep that shot camo in their hands. Smart because you can do things like that. Eco's gonna peek. In the words of Clutch, he's not gonna learn. 24 to zero already here. Optic Gaming looking good in round number three, the sudden death round. Let's go to an astral listening with Optic Gaming. Back in the game, and it's Optic who have a lead, but it isn't a significant one. 37 to 22 the score, but Trippy has been in control of those camos. He really has. He's been on top of them there. Of course, him and Coach Luxbox working there together to control that power up, and there he converts. He gets the stop on the ball and Whirlpool, and they will continue scoring. He's in trying to find that green gun. A new home, and he's looking for the body of a couple more players here from Cloud9. The lead is starting to grow, doubling up on the time that Cloud9 have managed to put on the board here with the rotation here from Trippy. That's going to force bodies from Cloud9 towards him. 
Optic lose three, APG last alive. Like I said, once again, not risking the play ball. Trippy throws that off, even though the shots were not coming in, there was not immediate pressure. He plays the ball perfectly, doesn't risk anything. They will stay in the lead, 53-22. Great defensive name from Formal! Had no right to win that one. Bound though, another double kill for him. Maybe this is the time for Bound to step up. Bound still leading on the team. 21 kills to his name right now, being outclassed though by Lucid on the other side of the stage. And that's the player matchup we were talking about. Lucid versus Bound right now. Lucid with the slightly more impressive numbers and the lead on the scoreboard as well. Great thing here for Optic Gaming fans and for Optic Gaming themselves is the fact that with this lead and just under three minutes left in the game, they don't have to be too concerned about that offball. They can play a little bit more slay heavy. They don't have to try and force anything. However, with three, four dead, shock rifle and the oddball, no reason not to pick it up at this point. Great map management, great game management from Lucid there. He's gonna grapple the ball, just sloop right into the pipes area. It's another one on Penguin as well. Also grabs the shock. Now they're gonna lock this down as a reminder. This is one to one off of the reset. The winner of this round will win game number one. Now gonna be last alive here. It's a fresh four dead. He's grappling every day. That, he gets that camo back in his hands. Camo, shock, Lucid set up for success here. It's one of the first times on the ATS main stage that we have seen. Oh! Should get this car on Penguin as well. That's one of the first times someone has grappled the ball and the shot and the camo. Just locking down this map. Ten points to go. If Lucid hits a couple of shots here. Optic will go up by one in this series. Only five seconds or so left for Optic to close out this final round. One shot from Lucid and it will be the game. Optic answer back. Life being shown here in the second best of seven from the Green Wall. And who did we say had to step up? It always had to be lucid. There was only one man. He goes 27 and 19 in the end. And he's right back in this grand final. You always felt it was going to be a matter of time until he introduced himself. Well, he's, he's picked a fine time to do it for Arctic Gaming fans. The first game in the second best of seven in our grand finals goes over to the green wall. And all of a sudden, their superstar has re-emerged as the player to watch. A big boost for Optic in the green wall here. They needed that game number one after four straight losses. If you're just joining us, welcome to the grand finals of the Halo World Championship. It's been an unbelievable tournament so far, an unbelievable grand final. And I am loving this here. We are locked in for a second best of seven. The players on the main stage are locked in for here. One final best of seven as we take a look at some of the highlights from that game. The shock rifle once again on recharge. It seems to be the thing that controls the narrative, the pace. With how talented everyone is with the weapon now, it's almost as if that is the swing, right? Yeah. Because you know a headshot's gonna come in, you know that's gonna be your pick. And towards the end of that game, the damage being done by Lucid, who also had the camouflage, of course, was just something that C9 could break through. This is the replays, of course. This is how close that first round was, but it was the comeback that was so impressive for Mopsy. A few things that were, once again, so incredible to me is power-up control from the likes of Octave Gaming. They get camos, even if those camos are burned or do not convert, they are still controlling those camos. Also great rotates that came in from Optic Gaming. And in the end, it was just great slaying control. If you look at the end of that last round, Lucid and APG were both one kill away from a killing spree when the game ended. That is beautiful control from the team. Overall, and you can see as well, the Optic out slaying C9, not by a huge margin, but just enough to get the time that they require. This moment, though, at the end of the game, this is where Lucid just took over for a few seconds. Sometimes it's not about just getting the kills. It's presence, it's damage, and keeping that old ball player safe. Hide your kids, hide your wife, because they're grappling everything up in here. Really Lucid are. is just grabbing whatever he wants on the map and just locking down, showing up, as we said, in a big way in our second grand final, and the boys are happy to be back on top. The question is, can they do it? three more times against Cloud9, which seems like an unsurmountable task given what C9 offered in the first grand final. Here's a look at your best of seven. So at this best of seven then, a reminder to everyone as well, if you're just joining us, Optic won the first game in that first best of seven. Then it was all Cloud9, four back-to-back -back games to send us into this bracket reset. He's back. He's back, by the way, Lucy. That game number one was... Uh, that's the reason you want him on your show, put it That's that way. Exactly it, he's back. The Lucid fans are back and for a very good reason. Packed house here in Seattle. It has been an unbelievable championship Sunday. And that trophy will sit here on the catwalk of the stage. Quite a far distance, if we're honest, from the players, not just in terms of distance, but also in terms of games. Yeah, a lot, a lot of time left in this series, but I want to talk a little bit about our next game type as well, because I mentioned happy memories. And that's what it is for Optic Gaming, right? This is where they won that Orlando Major. Catalyst 
Slayer. Treppy and Formal combining for those final couple of kills to take down Cloud9. Now, if you want to rekindle that kind of memory, all of a sudden, Wonder Wop is the second best of seven. You start to feel like maybe this series is leaning back towards Optic. But C9 have already proven that stealing any kind of game away, especially one where they beat you on before, they'll be back in the lab. They would have looked at that film and they will be prepared for this game. Couldn't agree more. I think whatever you were expecting of C9, take that crumpled up, throw it in the garbage, right? Because even though we saw them lose early on in the tournament, a game five to Native Red on the receiving end of a reverse sweep. We now see them not just on Championship Sunday in the Grand Finals, but truly on what could be World Championship form if they can repeat what we saw in that last series. And I think they're pulling out the last surprises, all the tricks up the sleeve. They saved them for last. Yeah, and let's, let's remember that first series, right? The Slayers. How strong did Cloud9 look in those Slayers? My goodness, it was almost as if Optic did not have an answer, but now Maybe they've come up with something in the break between the series to try and counteract what Cloud9 brought to the table. It's time for us to get into our next map. Catalyst is going to be the setting. Question is, can Optic Gaming change the narrative in the Slayer department? They lost both Slayers in that first best of seven. That was a huge reason why we saw the bracket get reset. This is an opportunity for Optic Gaming to not only win a Slayer, but also go up two to zero and only be two games away from the World Championship. I mean, we've already seen Catalyst once today. It was capture the flag in that first series, and that was an absolute banger. Let's hope that this game matches up to it. Maybe the pace isn't going to be the same, but the intensity and the meaning behind every single kill and every single death is going to be amplified even more. Absolutely. Here off the opening, we'll see where the damage goes. Lucid trying to play in this slowly. He has to be very careful of these grenades as he's pinged down to no shields. Zero to zero, 20 seconds gone. Now you can see the information being gathered by Bound. He could be as the first kill of the game. That's massive because that pick means it's a 4v3. Plus there's an overshield about. Lucid has the green bug gun, but he's not gonna be able to hit the damage. Another beat down comes in from Bound, but he doesn't get the kill! Bound turns away, thought he had the kill. In the end, they come away with a little bit less than they maybe had suspected. Because of that, it stays 4-2, and Optic Gaming, you could argue, get away with a little bit of murder to keep the game within two. Yeah, a little bit different situation for Cloud9. I think they'd be a little bit more uh, pissed off if the fact that they didn't come out of that with at least a two-kill lead. For now, though, they'll take it. It's a two-kill lead. But with a minute gone in this game, it's only six kills. Now, if you're expecting a fast-paced game type here, you were mistaken. Every single kill and death here on Catalyst can turn into a three or four kill sweep. That is why you are seeing the game played at such a slow and steady pace. Great example there of Bound not overextending. Earlier in the year, you might have seen him get taken down there. However, instead, in this situation, knows exactly when to double back and not get taken down. The damage is big, though. Here he comes. Bound doesn't need to be asked twice. He gets the damage, and now he flies. The rest of Optic are weak as well, and now you see the flank come in from Bound. He's trying to finish off the kill onto Lucid, but now he has to change his trajectory. Lucid once again, proving how important it is to stay alive. Look at Lucid there. He's finally likely going to be taken down. That will be a trade. Bound picks up one, though, in the end. Cloud9 leading by just two kills yet again. Optic staves off the Cloud9 advance. Get the feeling that in that situation, Bound was just desperate to have a frag grenade, anything but a plasma. It would have been so much more easy just to flush him out. Here comes the push down from Optic. But Eco and alongside his teammates was ready for that one. Lucid though, he's staying alive just long enough to re-challenge Trippy with two as well. And Optic go into a one kill lead. Make it two as Trippy adds to his tally. Look at that 10 to here and it's an overshield for Optic Gaming as well. Formal now with everything in his hands. Pulse Rifle, Overshield, and a two kill lead. If they get the right damage, they may collapse here. And the information he just got, I was gonna say, he knows Bound's waiting with that green gun of Bound! Decimates the Overshield for Optic. Formal taken down, what a key timing there from Cloud9 to take down the Overshield player and Formal nonetheless. Trippy taken down as well, two dead for the side of C9. They will tie the game and go back into the wow. lead themselves, 12 to 11 now. Wow, what a sequence that was. Let's just rewind for a few seconds as the players come back into the map. First of all, Formal gets the information. He saw the plasma pistol in the hands of Bound. He gets that information. I don't even think he expects Bound to almost do something as crazy as slide straight at him with the damn thing. He hits the shot and off the back of that Cloud9 collapse. And now you can see a lead going back and forth between these two teams. The speed of this game is slowly starting to pick up. 14 to 13 with a skewer here. That could be tied up very quickly from Stella. After gaming back into the lead by one, but as you say, just back and forth between these two. And with Cloud9 trailing by one, but skewer in hand. Let's get into an Astro listening with Cloud9. 
talking about? Mm, the he's, up, he's our top shoulder. High one in the pit, one in the pit. We're almost literally one shot. No, no, you need it, Kevin. Need the pit, need the pit. He's just in the top pit. Three here, three here. One week in the pit. 15 seconds, guys. No, 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 It has grapple, it has grapple. Grapple so uh, to get combo maybe? Yo, bottom sword, on your, oh, on your sword. Bottom sword. Yeah, I'll put that here. I'm trying to get on two, two, two. Can we look high? Can we look high? He's aping, he's aping. Oh, that's 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 that. Low, come on, come on. Low in the right corner, low in the right corner. Everyone come Not in the right corner, not in the right corner anymore. Lucy, Tommy has screw over there. Screwing him, yeah. Two, two. Two, two. Three, two. Three, Sword. Well, as he jumped back into the game, Penguin is facing down a swarm of Optic players. He goes for the challenge, but can he could clean up these kills? Three dead here for Cloud9. It's a perfect, perfect timing push there. Every single player on Optic Gaming on the same page. That will now give them a sizable lead. It's 23 to 17 in what has been an otherwise back and forth slayer. Optic Gaming starting to pull away here. And one thing we have to highlight, really rare to see penguin one and nine in this game so far he will need to turn that around if cloud nine is to stand a chance he had such a strong first best of seven as well so this game just not going his way at the moment but how quickly that can change 23 to 17 your score pretty dominant lead here for optic is bound once again with that plasma pistol in his hand he's looking to just see the outline of an optic player if he can he can strip away their shields that might be the damage they're looking for to push you tell Optic Gaming now they have this lead, they're really happy to just play the advantages, play these really obnoxious 90 degree angles, but the first picks do get traded out. Here comes the push as well, you can see Bound wants to push the pace. C9 wants to push the pace, but they're just falling one by one into the traps being set here by Optic. It's great patience by Optic. As we see APG now having a hold off another push coming in from Cloud9. And also it's great timing from Optic as well. Now they're up by eight, might be more. Yep, it's nine, now make it almost 10. And Overshield popping in 10 seconds. That could be the dagger. Overshield, as you say, the next focus for both teams. You have to wonder if there's a grapple in play maybe to steal this one away, or maybe Formal's just gonna walk across the light bridge, slam it into his chest and decide, I'm gonna end this game now. I wanna end this game quickly. 30 to 20, a 10 kill advantage. As Formal will make it more, he finds a trip ski. Penguins in front of him. Trippy almost might have gave it to him there, but this is a world championship. They take all four down. Now they are up by 14 kills. Overshield in hand for Formal, as you say. He's grabbing that OB like he wants to grab that world championship trophy. And as these kills start to pile up, the chance here in Seattle, the volume starts to increase. The Let's Go Optic chance starts to begin. The crowd starts to believe once more in the green wall as they're up 39 to 22. Oh my God, here. And this is just a blowout here in game number two. It would need to be a miracle from Cloud9 to bring this game back. Five minutes on the clock, but it feels like Optic Gaming firing on all cylinders. Formal has caught fire in the last few moments. It's another kill for Formal. Currently sat at 10 and 7. He had a very slow start to this game as well. But seven kills to go. I mentioned how Catalyst, especially Slayer, has been a very happy hunting ground for Optic Gaming. This is the map where they managed to win that first championship for Lucid and for Trippy. Is this going to be the map now that puts them in a position where they can start to believe they can be Halo World That's Champions? Couldn't agree more here. That might be, as we said, that game one they needed it and now they look even better in game number two. Just four kills to go before they close it out. Lots of talk about formal performance, APG, Lucid, but it's Trippy who's taking over in this game number two. Trippy's coming inside at 15 and 5, the man is positive 10, and Optic only need one. Oh, and he closes it out with three. Steak is on the menu. A steak dinner, a 20 kill win from Optic Gaming. We said they needed to step up in the Slayers, and they did just that. Optic start to believe the crowd Start to believe. Two to zero in the series now to the green wall. 
two games away from being your champion. C9 got some, some pressure on their shoulders now. They've been the one who have asked questions of Optic. The question is, is there enough in the tank now for C9 to really challenge what has been a strong start to this bracket reset? That is the question, and questions that you say certainly asked of Optic Gaming after that first grand final, and they only had about five minutes to reset as we take a look at some of the highlights of the game. Look at the opening here from Cloud9. They had everything. Overshield, the push, the man advantage. But somehow Optic makes the most of it, mainly because Bound looks the way on that melee battle. This is the moment for Bound that you saw. That's where Form was like, okay, I don't have to worry about Bound for a second. You do have to worry about Bound for a second. He flies in, he manages to rip that Overshield off, but from there, that was pretty much the only good thing to talk about for Cloud9. One by one, they were getting picked off. And it was just down to that patience from Optic, right? They were always in great positions to get that first pick. Playing nice and close, and when you got forward doing this, you don't have to worry too much about anything else. And they're just flying forward there, and amazing control, amazing teamwork, and timing pushes coming in from Optic Gaming all game long. They are just absolutely running a clinic, and it is not every day you see a steak dinner on the main stage. That's a 50 to 30 win. And as you said, can we talk about Trippy for a second? Because when we talk about questions being asked, we'll go to his POV in probably just a second as he closes out the game. He'll end it with three, the stake tacular, and Trippy will go 16 and five to end the game. After the first grand finals, we were like, where are Trippy and Lucid? They have arrived. Taking a look at the series layout so far. The green wall starting to get reconstructed here, brick by brick. Two games on the board. I'm starting to believe Lucid doesn't lose 1v1. Certainly not in the grand finals reset. I mean, technically true. won the show match a little bit earlier in the year against Renegade. We'll have to see if he can continue with the fighting form we've seen in the last couple of games. But like you say, the duo for so long, Lucid and Trippy. All of a sudden, they're coming back to life. But as we look at this, oh, let's, oh, let's oh. think about this, right? Before that bracket reset, Lucid was missing. We were talking about Brett Bound. How that has turned on its head. This is the first time I've ever seen a stat card put on screen and the crowd cheering for what they just saw. Earlier today, only about an hour ago, Bound was on a 1.46 KD and Lucid was on a 0.85. That has completely flipped. Lucid now in control of the Grand Finals and bound with his back against the wall, down two games to zero. Incredible. Just what a, what a reset can do, what some new game types can do, what a little break can do for the psyche of a team. Lucid knowing he has to be that man to step up. He has to be the MVP. If Optic want to come through this and Trippy, he's dragging him through this series as well. He's saying, don't forget about me. This isn't just a lucid show. All four players from Optic have returned to form at just the right time. As C9 returned to the stage, I'm sure there was a serious team talk down for the, for the guys that you can see on your screen. That's right. As we said, keep in mind, of course, Cloud9 returning to the stage. In all these series, they do have optional breaks that they can take for water, etc. And that's also probably a tactical timeout from them, if we're honest. A little bit of a mental reset opportunity. We talked earlier about Lucid and Trippy being in a 1.28 KD coming into this series. They were negative out of the Grand Finals number one. And then how about Trippy doesn't just go up to 1.28, he just went more than triple positive. He's yeah. 16 and five in a Slayer, right? Come this on. is a completely different story for both Lucid and Trippy. Those were our players to watch. So far, they have stepped up and they know what's at stake here in the Grand Finals. The two to zero is where we find ourselves. And I'm gonna say, if that was a game type, if I had to pick a winner out of any of the game types that we saw, I think that's probably one of C9's weakest. I think the fact that it is such a slow pace, that you have to be so methodical, that you have to at times, since you do nothing, just doesn't work with the natural game plan that C9 like to put together. However, the opposite can be said about our next game type. Strongholds on live fire. Yeah. Boy, you can fly, and boy, can you make plays. That's right, you cannot play this game type slow whatsoever. This will be a demanding game type. It will be a grueling game type. And it will be very different from what we just saw in that game number two. This will be pedal to the metal. And these players will be tested at a very high speed for the entirety of the game. Time to refocus for all these players. The gameplay just moments away now. For C9, it has to be a turnaround game for Optic. It might be one more step towards what almost feels like destiny for so many fans at home. Life is where we're going. 
it's time for some strongholds action. It's game number three of our second best of seven. These two teams, what a fight it's been already. Our first grand finals reset in the entire year in any HCS major. How perfect to have it here in the grand finals of the Halo World Championship game number three. About to get underway, Optic Gaming. Only two games away, C9 needing games on the board if they want to stay alive. I see this game type, I see this map, and I see some of the incredible plays we have seen throughout this year. The question is, are any of the eight players that are on our stage right now going to be able to create something we are talking about for a long time to come? Off the break here, you see Optic Strategy fly towards B. Early scoring has to be their thought process. Yeah, kills being traded out there. They will get B right away. They will put points on the board. You saw Formal's KD all weekend long, 1.46. Penguin, though, able to fly in there and get the back whack on back mud. That'll be two dead for Optic Gaming. Trippy needs to stay alive here at Pillars. Stays alive because he knows that Stella is going to be able to access that overshoot. It kills time perfectly, which means that now you're going to see the ends of the map being played by Cloud9. They're flipping over A and C. Don't be surprised to just see them control the overshield side of the map and try and trap the rest of Optic Gaming over at B. The push from Optic is in on C. That green gun is doing damage, but Stella answers back. Yeah, Stella makes sure to just bait and switch just a little bit there. Trippy with a great green gun to take off Stella's overshield entirely. Formal still has one. He's still getting new comboed. Formal just stay alive back tower. He should be cleaned up. He is in the end. Triple cap for Cloud9. Brilliant from Cloud9. The perfect start. They've got the weapons as well. Eco in the firing range right now. Can he find some targets? He hits one body and that's good enough. He has the information and now the rest of his team with the numbers and damage can push. Bound doesn't need to be arsewise. He flies in immediately. Absolutely. There takes down Formal. Lucid tries to push it. Eco punishes him with a spike and a no scope as well. Four dead still for Optic Gaming. This is complete control from Cloud9. Now the attention turns to C. The dummy spawn came in, which means the Optic will be trapped over at the tower. Formal lucky to keep his head on his shoulders for a few seconds there. He's trying to get his body, but there's the nades coming in. Great team fight, great push coming in from Optic. And now with his dominance here from C9, 78 to 17. Lose is starting to heat up though. Hold the phone. Three dead, just as quickly as we say that. And that's what this man can do with the sniper rifle. Over shield popping up as well. Formal gets an important kill. Bound's gonna be slide now. Oh, narrowly misses that shot there, Lucid. Big responsibility for him to keep this overshield competitive for Optic Gaming. Not only is he gonna be competitive by the looks of things, it's gonna go in their hands as well. Bound eliminated by Lucid. That tower play, perfect positioning from Lucid. Perfect shots. And now Optic are right back into this game. They have a triple cap themselves. Look at the Lucid and Trippy duo here. They're grabbing the overshield. They're hitting all the shots. Playing together since 2016. They only secured their first event win less than one month ago at the Orlando Major here. Finally, will be taken down, but it's a great run from Trippy Optic Gaming, still scoring, and they're right back in this. They're only down now by less than 20. What a great start it was for C9, but what a great response it has been coming in from Optic Gaming. Showing the heart we know they have, but C9 also showing that this is a game type where they can be much more competitive than what we just saw. B gets flipped into their hands. The overshield's coming up as well. Trippy wins an important battle at the back of B. That means you can turn this one over. Not too much pressure going to be coming in. As you can see, the C9 have lost a lot of members. Optic Gaming will be scoring once more. AP in their hands. Great dancing there from Trippy to avoid all the nades. He repulses up to avoid even more nades as well. He is the commander of back B. And because of that, Optic Gaming will continue scoring. Contested now, though. Oh, God. Bound does not waste any time. Oh! And he hits a double on APG on the sandbags as well. I, I swear to God, sometimes Bound's playing on mouse and keyboard and everyone else is playing on controller. The way that he whips that sniper rifle around corners is just... Something not many players can do. APG just peaked for a second. And if you peak against Bound, usually it doesn't end too well. Bound eventually take it down there. It's too dead, but it's still map control and control of the scoreboard for the side of Cloud9. They're all spawning up here in the house. Let's go ahead and get ready for an Astro. Listen in with C9, see if they can regain control. Two nets, two nets, one thing on me. One, two nets, two nets, two nets, one thing on me. One, two nets, two nets, one thing on me. One, two nets, two nets, one thing on me. One, two nets, two nets, one thing on me. One, two nets, two nets, one thing on me. One
Watch out, watch out, watch out, see watch, watch out, see watch, 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 watch pillars, he ran pillars. He's nuts, he's nuts, shot. Pillars and uh, nuts, pillars and nuts. Nuss was weak. Four weak B, one shot to B. Where's four at? He's B, one shot, he's B, one shot. Alright, go down, Zen. 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 Go down, Look at Bill Rudd. One shot makeup. Two shot makeup. He's gonna have to us. Jump in, jump in, jump in, jump in. Maybe this guy. Wait, almost gonna be C. He's a bit right tunnel, right tunnel. Right tunnel was weak. I feel like right tunnel. I can look at this. Okay, door. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sitting B. Jump back into the game as Eco falls from the skies onto the shoulder of APG. As Optic try and fight their way back into this game, but it's been a great little rally coming in from Cloud9. The communication, the intensity is there. The question is, will it be the same from Optic? Let's jump into an Astro listening and find out. Here. Everything's going to go. 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 Yeah, 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 yeah,
C9 inside, APG sends him out though. Can they get the conversion? It's APG in a 1v1 for the ages. Stunner's there as well. And it looks like Cloud9 have managed to momentarily get scoring on their hands. But here we go now, BC, look at this. That's gonna be it. C will get converted the last second now. Optic will continue scoring and they will finish the game. Absolute carnage in front of that tower. But from chaos, a win for Optic Gaming. The series stands at 3 to 0. They are one game away from claiming the Halo World Championship trophy. Once again, it's a huge late game run for Optic Gaming, and you can almost see it in Trippy's face. One game away from the World Championship trophy and $400,000 first place prize. The late game composure once again is brilliant from Optic Gaming, even though we saw a huge lead early on for Cloud9. Optic Gaming answer back, they answer back in a big way, and these guys started putting on a show. Once again, it's just a great illustration of how important it is to not only get the weapons, but put the damn thing to use. Optic in that final run, formal. Couple of no scopes, couple of headshots. The heat wave running back and forth between those strongholds. You're always going to win those individual battles. But the carnage that ensued in that final moment. This play, by the way, from Formal was about as sneaky as it like. Just meant that Cloud9 could not answer back. And for the killing spree as well there. Formal making it look easy. And absolutely great control on this fight. Look at the jump from Formal, by the way. Formal gets in to buy extra time, which causes absolute carnage. It is APG. In the late game, you're gonna see him. Look, they're not even looking at him. He repulses out Stellar as well. Beautiful work here from APG on the pillars. He's gonna stay alive as long as he needs to. Long enough for Trippy to come in and help finish the point. That is what they needed to secure it at the last second. Look, Trippy will fall as well. Actually, I think he gets a kill there on the rail. And they close it out, 250 to 173. We had all eyes on Trippy coming into the series. He just went 21 and 15 <laughs> yet again. They are settling for nothing less than a world championship so far. And they're one game away. I really hope that we can package up that replay from APG and show it to anyone who says stats are the only thing that matter. Yeah. Because that is the perfect example of why the intangibles cannot be shown in that stat screen. APG and Penguin are playing a matchup, but I gotta be honest with you, the story is bigger than this. It's yeah. bigger than these two players because this could be the final game of the Halo World Championships. Optic Gaming, if they win this, they win the whole thing. My God, Cloud9 backs against the wall. They will need to win the next four games if they want to steal the Halo World Championship from Optic Gaming. And right now, that looks like an impossible task. Three dead for Optic off the rip, though. This is the game type where Cloud9 have had some success in the past. Optic also, of course, won the North American Super on this game time with that crazy last minute end. SVG trying to survive. Penguin threads the needle with the rockets though. Power weapons in the hand of C9. I think that's just gonna calm things down for them a little bit here. Oh boy, speaking of wanting to calm things down, not so fast as Optic Gaming. They just caused absolute carnage there on the rail. So very few points on the board early on for the side of Cloud9. Trade coming in. Optic still in the numerical disadvantage on the map. You see Lucy formal. Two players down. Trippy now last alive. Great hold this early on from Cloud9. They're just commanding this balcony position. Stella doing some great damage. I mean, Lucy's just come off spawn there and already has to wait that extra two, three seconds with those shields coming back before he can really think about getting across the map. Absolutely. Lucy trying to actually push here just up the middle. Eventually will be slowed down by the grenades. Lucid is your last player alive. Three dead for Optic Gaming. Still trying to poke out. Still trying to cause some problems, Lucid. You can see the bound is hunting him down. Stella's gonna be able to clean him up. That's gonna be a turnover of the Bulldog, I believe, as well. You see the ping already coming in from Cloud9. Weapons not only in their hands, but the kills going alongside them as well. At the moment, Cloud9 have somehow rallied. This has been almost a perfect kill for them. Trippy hasn't even got a kill yet. Trippy doesn't have a kill, and Cloud9 is outslaying Optic Gaming 16 to five right now. Talk about a hot start to your game four when you have to win every single game in the series. Cloud9 now 16 to 6. I mean, this is the kind of tempo you need to set if you want to go on a big run. We're inside of that next hill as well. The tram hill locked down by Cloud9. Maybe that's the uh, the key they were looking for to unlock this door. However, the kill from Trippy on those 
Beast there just to get the Bulldog back in their hand. A couple of kills are exchanged though. Bound picks up a double elsewhere on the map. And that means Stella gets another set of rockets. Two in a row now for C9. Yeah, big, big power weapon control coming in. Stellar stays alive off the first rocket as well. Maybe even gets another the boom block from APG. Oh my god. A perfect boom block with the drop shield will keep him full shields on this push. Found. Oh my god. How did he win that one? Formal now versus Penguin and C9 seems to be winning the 1v1s all of a sudden. Trimpy still alive in the back of the base. It's 2v2 on the map at the moment, but Eco is looking to challenge. Lucy picked up two kills elsewhere. That means that Trippy's got to slow down for just a second here. And you can see how he's valuing these weapons as well. Doesn't want to give the Stalker and the Bulldog over to C9. Beautiful play from Eco. Eco has a challenge from front seat. Bound hits the pizza jump to finish the kill on Commando. It's these little plays that C9 is stringing together that has them in the lead right now. Still too dead for Optic Gaming. Difficult to hear from this break for Optic as well. Is yeah, you want to challenge mid map, but you're going to go up against Bound with a Stalker rifle. Right? Two shots. You're no shields. Three shots. You're dead. It's as simple as that. This weapon is so so powerful when you're holding down this hill, but so it's a push when it's coordinated so well from Optic, two dead on either side. Look at this now, Formal has to work alongside Trippy to lock this down. He knows the pressure's coming, it's a perfect grenade on the Commando, so Formal will live to tell the tale. All four players on driveway and Commando for C9. So this is just a distraction, you can see there is still a player alive, I think called the Commando. They have been eliminated, Eco might be the player causing problems elsewhere. He takes out Trippy. Formal with that Stalker, he's gonna take another one down himself. Eco's still alive somewhere. And you can see Optica trying to hunt it down, they cannot find him. Eco just being, as you say, an absolute nuisance. Right now, might get pinched in the end. Still alive. Down here, he must be alive just below on the ATM. He needs to find Eco when you're finding headshots on the Penguin. Finally, Eco appears, and finally, Formal takes him down. Stella now gonna be eliminated as well. It's four dead for Cloud9. Optic Gaming holding this tram down. And you can see this might be the opportunity for them not only to get that point on the board, to level things up, but also get the rockets. That's exactly what they do. Two in the chamber, two kills, going in the favor of Lucid. Look at this now, just continuing to score and getting more ahead in the game. As you say, they tie it up in terms of hills, but off the back of those kills, they get full map control. It is another three dead for Cloud9. Off to gaming, starting to heat up here in game number four. Cloud9 against Sandbox right now. Every single fight they're running into. No battle rifles to be seen, it's a stalker. It's a Bulldog. It's rockets in the hands of Lucid. It's so difficult to fight out of these situations if you see nine. But Optic taking advantage of every opportunity presented to them. Questions were asked of Lucid in that first series. He now leads the game and kills by quite a margin. He's 11 and 8. Optic Gaming still with a lead here on this third hill as well. Scary moment here for C9. If they don't manage to break this hill, we know how it transfers over to that cafe hill. So close, not too much distance to travel. If you can pick up those kills and you can win this hill, you can transition so quickly with a great setup. But for now, C9 looks so broken. The first time they put their toes in the hill, and you can see the last two players from Optic recognize they don't have map control enough to push. Those were very, very important kills in the back of PD from Cloud9. They did not trade the kills out. They went two for O. Oh, that is what led to this control here on the back statue. Penguin now sitting here on Neons. You can tell Optic Game is waiting for a timing push. Penguin gets the information. Smartly backs down as well, but here comes the push from Optic. Two players do fall though, so Penguin doing enough damage for a kill to be traded out. Bound now turning his attention towards the arcade. Trippy taken down to no shields, but survives for now. And by doing so, allows the rest of Optic to just flood in towards that hill. A clean break now. Cloud9, three members dead and Optic with a chance to win the point. A clean break, perfect baiting and switching for the entire Optic Gaming roster there. Trippy goes up on plants, does a bunch of damage, and then escapes with his live formal with a double kill stalker bulldog combo. You do not want formal with this combination if you are on the Cloud9 side of the stage. It could not have happened, that kill, that double kill, at a worst time here for Cloud9. Not only to Optic get that point to go into the lead, they get the rockets, and Trippy! He goes to work! Look at the value that they get from that double kill from Formal. Just like you said, they also get the rockets. Should be somehow turns two rockets into three kills in the tires as well. Cloud9 is late to the party, and Trippy and Optic Gaming take advantage of that. Two dead here. Cloud9 need to find something. They need to find it quickly. They need to find the kind of form that they found in that first series. But at the moment, APG said, you've talked about form and you've talked about Trippy and Lucid. Now it's my turn to sell. He is flying at Cloud9 and he is taking everybody down. It is four dead yet again for Cloud9 here. 
and Optic Gaming potentially on the cusp of a championship. Let's get into what could be the last Astro Gaming. Listen in with Optic Gaming. They get the brand. from Eco there will be traded out for a moment. APG was your last player alive, but there's 119 on the clock, and Optic Gaming leads by two hills. Such a difficult hill here for Cloud9 as well. The bottom middle hill, we know how difficult it is to lock down. There's so many angles that you could be attacked from, especially if Optic, like they have worked so hard to get themselves into a lead. Optic are thinking time here. C9 are thinking the opposite. We don't have time. That's our enemy, and we have to get points on the board. Two kills for Optic here. They have the man advantage yet again. It might be three dead for Cloud9. Optic Gaming is going to let the time tick down on this hill without a doubt. Penguin, last player alive. We are within one minute now of Optic claiming the throne. 50 seconds. Every second of passage, you know that the four gentlemen who are sat on that screen dressed in their championship Sunday whites are getting closer and closer to a world championship. Lucian just playing Slayer at the moment. C9, two for two. APG last alive here for Optic. We've seen some crazy stuff this weekend, and surely we can't see C9 come back now. Let's see what APG does here. He's gonna get damage, wait for his teammates to spawn. It is still possible. Keep in mind, the clock will freeze every time the Cloud9 gets in the hill. C9, of course, won that first hill as well. They won it without being even challenged. But at the moment, Trippy says, you know what? I'm putting you all in the death screen. I'm collecting the rockets because I want to be on my way to collect a Halo World Championship. The Rockets might be the deal breaker here. You can't get in the hell, because Trippy's going to give you the boom booms. 17 seconds left in the game. Trippy comes around the corner. Trippy cleans house, but leaves a little bit of rubbish on the floor as Bound has to be worked on. Penguins, your last player alive. They're going to get this kill on front seat, no doubt. Seven seconds left. Seven seconds left. The NA Super was the first step. It was this game type. Orlando was the second, and now the journey is complete. Optic Gaming, the green wall, stands tallest. As with just a few moments left, wait. Wait a second, you're wait one a second. Hey, BG's headset was off. The game isn't over yet. There's no way. Somehow, Cloud9, now we can say it. Oh my God! It's a premature celebration, even on the stage for Optic Gaming. They thought it was over. C9 was in the hill the whole time. APG was shaking. He couldn't believe it. They forced a reset there in overtime for just a few extra seconds. Optic had no idea. We had no idea. And in the end, now we can say that Optic Gaming are your Halo World Champions. I mean, we said, right? This has been the craziest week. The craziest tournament of all time. What other way would you have it end? But now that we are finally at its conclusion, Optic Gaming are your Halo World Champions! And here they go across that stage, smiles across 
all five of them as they approach the World Championship trophy. It's been a long, long road for these four guys. And just a few weeks after the first champ, Arte Gaming are now champions of the world. What a road for these five. And then not an easy grand final here. A grueling, grueling bracket reset for them. Losing four maps straight. And now, after an unbelievable grand finals reset, they will hoist the 2022 Halo World Championship trophy. Just weeks after a first title, a first major championship for Lucid and Trippy. They become world champions for APG. Another championship. His first Halo World Champion. But for formal, he joins no what has to be one of the most historic groups in all time. And that is going to be a double world champion. Formal, what a moment for him. And look what Optic Hex had backstage in case we oh needed it. My word. It is the Optic Gaming chain now placed on Trippy and Lucid. APG as well. You got Hastro, Hex, alumni, Optic Gaming ownership and staff coming to the stage as well, celebrating these five and what they have done as the confetti falls here at the Halo World Championship. It's Optic Gaming in the end, 4-0 in the reset thing. We'll be playing the World Championship Pro. And here it is for APG as well. Formal as well. Everyone's throwing on the Optic Gaming ice. And that has got to feel good. I mean, what a journey it's been. What a journey it has been. I mean, just a couple of months ago, people were calling them on Linus, saying they couldn't get it done on that. Now they have a major championship, a world championship to go alongside it. And let me tell you, APG, that smile will not leave his face for quite some time. I mean, he cannot stop smiling. He's also, you can tell on the verge of tears there, he's got to be shaken. And that entire team could not be happier, could not be more proud, of course, Optic fans, of what their team was able to do this weekend. Lucid will hoist it again. And talk about resilience over the last two hours of the Grand Finals. Unbelievable stuff here from Optic Gaming. The reset from Cloud9, who played their part in this story. They sent it to a second best of seven. They pushed it all the way. And they tested every single member of Optic Gaming for Trippy Lucid in the second best of seven, reminding us of just how good they are. That's going to do it all from Bravo and myself. It's been an absolute pleasure and a privilege. And of course, we send our congratulations down to Optic Gaming. Your Halo World Championships plays. It's down to you. History has been made as Optic Gaming are your world champions. So much to talk about. Lucid, I'm gonna hand a mic to you first as you're decked out in gold. You got a gold trophy. You are a world champion, the league MVP. How are you feeling in this moment? I feel amazing right now. Wow. I feel absolutely amazing. This is what it is. My voice is shot now. I feel like you. You know what? That's, that's passed it to your duo here. Well, I do want to say, yeah. I do want to say that grit that we showed was, um, I don't think we've been put through that just yet, and um, I'm so proud of the team right now, and uh, what we were able to do there. And we just pulled off, boys. We just did it. Let's you, go. You did it. You Let's did go. it. Trippy! You're a world champion now. What a season it's been. How are you feeling? I'm feeling on top of the world right now, you know? To, to win like that after losing the series 4-1 first time around, uh, it feels amazing. There's not a better feeling in the world. Not at all. Not at all. Pass it on over here. Formal, you started your career here in Halo. We've seen you play so many amazing matches. You had a national championship in a different game, but you came back home and you got one for Halo. What does this mean for you? Uh, I mean, these last couple years have been pretty tough. Um, in Call of Duty, so I don't know. This was just like a dream come true. Um, I'm just really proud of us, and I'm thankful as hell for you guys, and uh, I'm happy to take it home. Nice, nice, nice. Now, now, hand the mic on over to Coach Lunchbox in the back real quick, and take the trophy from the, from, from the goat over here on the end. Now, Coach, what was this series like? You guys went to a reset, but you came back and battled back. 
How did you, what was the turnaround going into that second set for you to four them like that? Yeah, obviously they came out hot uh, that first series. Uh, they handed us to it, handed it to us a little bit, but that shows why these guys are the best team in the game for the mm -hmm. last six months. What a series. What a series indeed. What a series indeed. APG! Thank you, thank you. APG, we've been watching your career for so many years. You have been a staple throughout Halo, and I know this World Championship is hitting you right to the heart. Talk to me about your journey and what this one right here means for you. Bro, I, I honestly, this doesn't feel real. I've tried to like, I've spoken to Joey before we moved. We were talking about envisioning championships, mm -hmm. and after everything we've been through this entire year, and we come out on top the last two events in a pretty dominant fashion besides the first series against C9, but. I'm just so fucking happy. You have no idea. Yeah. I'm so, I, like, yep, yep, this, yep. this doesn't, this like, my words will not exp like show how grateful I am for all of you, how grateful I am for my team, my organization, my girlfriend, my family. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I just wanted to say thank you to all of our families that came out to support us, all of our girlfriends, mm -hmm. everybody. I'm really happy that our families got to see the Greenwall crowd in full force. So thank you guys. Thank you guys, yeah. seriously. Now, the man, the man in the back who helped put a lot of this together, anything you want to say to the Greenwall fans out there who supported this team? Thank you for supporting these boys throughout this journey. Obviously, like, this man coming up from Call of Duty and doing what he did. The green wall has never been as loud as it was today, so I appreciate you guys all for that. This one, as all of them, are for you. One more time, give it up for the green wall, as they are your world champions. Of the gaming world champions by the end of the weekend. And we said, with this clean run here this weekend, it would be very, very difficult to take these guys down and to snatch that trophy from them. No one's snatching that anytime soon. Not with the work that they've been putting in, the dedication, the time, the growth that this team have been through. But Clutch, what a series that was. What a double series that was here in this grand final. I mean, it's hard to put into words watching what we're kind of witnessing on this main stage right now and how much it means to these guys, but how proud are you of Optic Gaming and what they've been able to achieve this season? I mean, it's been an unbelievable journey for these guys. These guys have put in, like you said, so much work throughout such a long time, and it, the ups, the downs, the question marks all around them. The accolades weren't there before, but you don't need them. I mean, Formo joins this team. He brings that level of professionalism that history with him and for him to come back and impact Halo in this manner, for APG to get his world championship, for Trippy and Lucid to reach the ceilings that they have right now. I mean, what an opportunity for these guys. What a moment for the rest of their lives that this will be. It's a first for so many of them up there. And I'll tell you what, Formal, he's still got it. My God, has he still got it. And in grand final form as well, just absolutely incredible. I just want to take a, a little moment as well to just kind of process what happened at the end there, Goofy. I mean, we saw the green wall get up. They thought it was done. They thought it was over. They were celebrating. It was zero on the clock. The C9 jump in for the last split second and things start to seem a little bit shaky for a moment there. But in green wall fashion, and how they've learned all season long to ice up, to clutch up when it matters most, and make sure the job is actually done. And that timer, it does go to zero, and they do win the championship. Congratulations are in order for Optic Gaming. You're a Halo World Champion. What a performance out of every single member on this team. We saw the emotion on the main stage, taking a look at the replay, the reaction of a little bit of confusion at the end. Look, but Lucid realizes, he points, he's like, wait, no, no, guys, step back down quick. We gotta, we gotta Lucid. play. Of, we gotta play some games. Of course, it was Lucid to make sure that everyone realizes the in-game leader in and out of the game. Yeah. But what a moment that we just got to witness history. history. Optic Gaming are your champions and... Dude. What a series. I just want to say what Formal has accomplished. Hey, look. People on Twitter, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. I'm almost certain only one other player has been able to do this, and that is win a world championship in a completely different game 
and then come here to Halo and win a world championship as well. Formal accomplished that as well as Shotzi. So that is some great company to have. Yeah. But on top of that as well, can we really just take a moment to reflect on the, I mean, guys, you played with Brad for years uh, and to yeah. see him, to see him finally get that freaking moment, The emotion. Man, I mean, I, I, I'm almost about I, to cry, I, I felt choked it's beautiful. up watching that. Uh, he deserves I, it. I teared up when I got to see Bradley win. I've known Bradley since 2006. He's been doing this for 17 years, y'all. Seven. 17 years he hasn't got a championship. His name isn't in the banners. Well, guess what? APG, your name, it's written in stone now. It's in the banners. You belong right. with the champions of the past. I couldn't be more proud of that kid. More, I, I have no words to say about it, man. I'm yeah, emotionally but, invested to I say the least. You but you know, to just take a moment though to reflect on the series at hand, I do want to give a lot of credit to Cloud9. Yes. Right? They had a miraculous lower bracket run that I know they were not expecting to have to go through, but they showed a lot of grit. This run was incredible, but despite that, they still ran into that brick wall in the grand final reset, and that just goes to show you how resilient yes. this Optic Gaming team is. I thought that genuinely, Lottie, I, I genuinely thought that Optic were in the mud. I was like, this is not good. This is not the result that they were hoping for. They were destined to win this championship, and it seemed like C9 were right there to stop them. But good God, way to play. Lucid and Trippy stepping up when they needed it. Every single player contributing. The coach go. Lunchbox, I love you, brother. So happy for you. This was unbelievable. It just shows you how good Greenwall are. Because oh, Cloud9 yeah. Yeah. coming through the first series, resetting the bracket, kicking out some of the bricks in the green wall, making a tunnel, going through it. But the testament, this team, the way it was able to patch that wall back up within a matter of minutes to turn it around, yep. to take a series in that fashion the second time around, learning from the mistakes, going on the fly. We talk about adapting in this game so much, and that's exactly why, because you can do things like that. And Optic Gaming, my goodness me, $400,000 richer in this prize pool. Cloud9 will take $220,000 home. We have a lot of money for a lot of our teams here who have played their hearts out, but no more than Optic Gaming, because Optic, they wanted that. They wanted it from Orlando. They wanted it all season long. They put in so much work, and they got it done, Clutch. They got it done. And what an incredibly clean, clean sweep it was for them in the winner's bracket run. And to do it the way that they just did it and show us the grit and determination they were talking about was insane. Resiliency. Yeah. yeah. These guys, their journey, their careers, it, it couldn't be that straightforward. They couldn't just go to the grand finals and 4-0 sweep and dominate. They needed a struggle. They needed to show something that they've been doing throughout their entire career. Yeah. The ups, the downs, and to come out on top to figure it had it to be out. this way. Right, Goof? It had to be this way because Optic, at this point, they weren't really challenged even in Orlando when they played Cloud9 in the finals. It was easy. It, it was easy. It felt like Cloud9 were kind of checked out at that point, but they managed to do it, Goofy. You That's the crazy part. Couldn't have scripted it any better. Like Lunchbox <laughs> said on that main stage, the last six months, it's been all Optic Gaming. They've been the best team in the world, and they showed it here at the Halo World Championship. Looking at the KD leaderboard, I see a lot of green on there. And on the top of the board, it's the MVP, Lucid, leading the troops, 1.26, an absolutely phenomenal second series for Lucid. He struggled a little bit in, fir in the first one, but in true MVP fashion, yeah. he comes back when his team needs him most and performs when his team needs him most. And a 4-0 sweep for Optic Gaming. Yeah, the bounce back. Incredible. Trampolines on that stage for Optic Gaming. And the bounce back was legendary because what an incredible grand finals they put on for you guys. I mean, Cloud9, GG's, commiserations, what incredible effort from those guys, I think, to come into that series mentally, knowing that they had to reset a bracket to do so. That second series was very, very difficult for yeah. those guys. I think I want to give a lot of love to the teammates on that team because Absolutely. they have been through the ringer. Again, yeah, and everyone a second doubted place them. finish for them. And everyone doubted them. You yeah. know, everyone said they're not passionate, they don't care. That's not true. Sleeping that team giant. cares. Hey, Bound's going to be a problem for a long yeah. time. Hell if yeah. If we learned Bound. anything this weekend outside of the green wall being the best, Bound's going to be a problem Bound, for a long time. Bound proved at this event that he is, without a doubt, 
a big game player. Yeah. And I think that that was the question mark that he had all season long when he was on phase. People were wondering if he was going to bring that same kind of, of, of tenacity to Cloud9 in place of Renegade. But without a doubt, he most definitely proved that. But I, I, I got to give a lot of love to Cloud9. They had a, yeah. a real tumultuous lower bracket run, but they freaking did it. But obviously, the day belongs to Optic Gaming, but it was just an incredible tournament through and through. The storylines, honestly, you'd think we would have scripted the damn thing. I know, indeed. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, though, we have a champion bundle to celebrate Optic's win here at the World Championships. It does include the Halo World Championships 2022 MK. Oh my the, God, that thing's yeah, armor so coating. Clean. I know, it is absolutely stunning. I didn't even know this stunning. was a thing. <laughs> we do have a know, battle, battle boy. Rifle, rifle coating as well. Uh, and of course, our victory laurel as well. Absolutely stunning stuff and obviously optic they have their names on that one so you will be supporting your world championship team pick that up in 30 those. minutes 30 yeah. minutes we Actually, were told yeah th it's literally available in 30 minutes so make sure you keep your eye on halo esports twitter page for the home. official release of those and you can just go into game grab them snatch them up support the boys for doing this for doing this damn thing I also Look. have some extra special oh, guests go. up here come on get let's in do it. squeeze in babes let's squeeze in let's everybody squeeze, squeeze in. in squeeze in what Even an incredible guy. season this has been. Thank you so much to my team. Thank you, production. You guys are absolutely incredible. Rockstar. Optic Gaming, congratulations, champs. Art World champions here for 2022 at Halo. Thank you so much, everybody. We can't wait to see you guys next season. We love you all so much. See you all in December for LAN.